Friends of Grant Football is a nonprofit organization that exists to build on Grant's strong football tradition, providing long-term viability and to provide the resources required to support the Grant Football community, past, present, and future. Friends of Grant Football would like to thank our 2019 Grant Football corporate and individual supporters and sponsors in the theme of our mission. Friends of Grant Football strives to enrich the lives of players, students, alumni, and administration by providing a program that sustains generation after generation in the pursuit of academic and athletic excellence. Our values are aligned with the tradition that extends beyond many generations of alumni who have passed through the hallways, representing PIL leadership in a challenging and supportive athletic environment. The foundation of the Generals is built on integrity, accountability, inclusion, and a proud competitive spirit. Please visit friendsofgrantfootball.com to join our efforts and participate within our grant football community. Brian here for Grant Boosters, who help raise money for Grant's high school's many diverse clubs and athletic teams. Grant's clubs and teams keep our kids inspired, active, and connected. The success of Grant's clubs and teams would not be possible without the support of parents, friends, and family like you. Please donate today to continue these wonderful activities. Please go to Grant Gives. And a very happy start to the October year 2019. And what a great start it's been as we've hit the halfway point of the season. Crazy to think that we have played four football games and how electrifying it's been for head coach John Beck as he has got his team focused and rolling. They continue to score a ton of points and a ton of points they've scored this year. The question always is, who's going to make the play tonight for the Generals? Last week, Jay Sean Pete, three touchdowns. Luke Bacola, five catches, 198 yards. Jamison Price returned a kickoff. An interception for touchdowns I'll forget it. <laughs> as the generals blew past the Rough Riders. I don't know about you, but that's what I call a good day at the office. As they rolled last week, 66 to 30. However, that was 168 hours ago, and now it's time to focus on the next three hours. As the generals have been welcoming to Bruin Country, as they will play a mid-season non-league contest. As the Barlow Bruins at 3-1 and one from the Mount Hood Conference welcome in your generals here to Barlow High School. We'll take our first time out, but when we come back, we'll introduce my man, the very professional Mitch Bukite. We're here live on homecoming night as the generals come in here into Bruin country. You're watching live coverage of Grant football right here on the Grant Sports Network. Hi fans, Brian and Mitch here for Blind Onion Pizza and Pub, a neighborhood favorite pizza joint close to Grant and offering great honest pizza, sandwiches, salads, and their craft beers. The Blind Onion offers a casual, nostalgic, fun atmosphere and has a strong focus on delicious pizza, making it a popular hangout that fits perfectly in the community. Check out the delicious house special pizzas and oven-baked sandwiches. And don't forget about their wonderful appetizers and excellent salads with bargain prices on micro-brews and special pizza creations. The Blind Onion, located at 3345 Northeast Broadway Street, right here in Portland. Eat there after the game or any time. Blind Onion Pizza and Pizza. You are looking live at Barlow High School out here in beautiful Gresham, Oregon. Hello, everyone, and welcome here to another exciting Grant broadcast. Brian Gregg here to bring you all the action, and I would be remiss if I didn't bring in my man, the constant professional. Uh, I don't know how to go any further here. The guy that, that makes the broadcast so enlightening and so exciting. Mitch, welcome to the broadcast. Great to have you back. You know, I just follow your lead. You, you, you just set the you just set the table for me. I sit down and eat. That's all I do. I really appreciate uh, the the way you uh, the way you put together the introduction. You really set the scene for our folks at home. You know that are uh, 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 well enough to to follow us here this evening for some some great football. And I'm really excited again. The sun's starting to go down. Uh, and we're really getting started with some good football. I know we've got two excellent teams that are really hungry here this evening. Well, Mitch, 
we got to talk a little bit about both teams here. First, we'll start with the Generals here. Right now, the Generals have scored 125 points this season. We always talk about their offense. Let's talk about the defense here. And let me fill you in here with some stats here. Right now, Coach Beck and his team have only given up 87 points all year. That's ranked ninth in the state in points given up. Let me put some context around that for you. 17 teams in the 6A haven't even scored 87 points all season. <laughs> what do you attribute that to? I mean, you've certainly watched a lot of these games here. Mm -hmm. What do you see as the reason why, one, they fly around to the football, they're, they're physical, but in your mind, Mitch, what allows a team to only be, you know, only have 87 points scored on them? Well, what it comes down to is a coaching staff that really dedicates themselves on the defensive side of the ball. Because what, what it comes down to is uh, when your defense puts your your offense in a position to score, that's ultimately what we're going to be looking at as a result here is, is those numbers that you attributed uh, for the offense versus the defense. And and what it comes down to also on the on the for the coaching staff is they they're they're fluent. They don't stick to the same game plan. They they understand, you know. You, you always hear the term that would take what the defense gives you, but the defense is taking away what the offense is trying to do in this case. And, and he's done an excellent job of making sure all their guys are on the same page there. And, and you know, the most points they've given up here is 28, and, and that was at, at home there against uh, Newburgh. 30, so. Roosevelt last week. So, yes, so, oh, excuse so, me, 30. 30 points. 30, excuse me, just last week. And that was, uh, I don't want to call it, it was, it was 30 points, probably should have been less. Sure, sure. Um, uh, there was a little bit of, uh, for lack of a better term there, some garbage time uh, scoring at the end of the ball game that probably shouldn't have taken place. Testing some new guys, giving some new guys some run, you know, excellent time to do that when you when you have that commanding lead and ultimately a command over the ball game. There, a great time to get those guys in, get some run. So the Generals three and one on the year, looking to make it four and one as they have a non-league game here at the first part of October. But knowing Co Coach Beck, he certainly just wants to strap it up and go hit somebody, and they really do have their first. Real test tonight, you know, other than that West Salem game, but you got to go on the road. Mother Nature is starting to turn the faucet on a little bit little here. Bit. It's it's homecoming night here, but there's no doubt in our minds, Coach Beck's got this team focused, ready to go. Man, wasn't this the the game you really circled? The other team's homecoming yeah, game for sure. Because you, you know you got to really think about what they're saying to you. You know, uh, um, not necessarily verbally, but you're the you're the reason. That you're here this evening on a homecoming night, and I, you know, I always circled these games. So I'd, I'd anticipate that if the generals are victorious in this contest, that I anticipate that they'll trickle their way back into the top ten. We're about 12 minutes away before we're going to kick this one off. When we come back, I had a chance to sit down with head coach and the visor head coach John Beck, and this segment's at your beck and call. You're watching live coverage of Grant Football right here on the Grant Sports Network. Hi fans, Brian here. As a former athlete who certainly felt the aches and pains of growing up playing football, I appreciate the work that chiropractors do. But look no further than to the Bodie Tree Clinic right here in Northeast Portland. The Bodie Tree Clinic is a whole care clinic dedicated to physical health, recovery, and healing. They specialize in rehabilitation from injuries related to sports, work, auto accidents, personal injuries, as well as treatment for neck and back pain. Dr. Dillon of the Bodie Tree Clinic is Grant's team chiropractor and gives the players time and attention in making sure their bodies are feeling good and moving right. For more information, please visit their website at thebodietreeclinic.com. Welcome back. To Barlow High School, Mitch Bukite, Brian Gregg here on the call. And as I said before we went to the break there, I had an opportunity to sit down with head coach John Beck in this week's At Your Beck and Call. Welcome into the coach's corner here. We're live at Franklin High School. And I'm joined with head coach John Beck. And uh, coach, i got to start off by saying that you look good today. you got some moxie to you today. Welcome back to the broadcast here. We're in the 
joined with head coach John Beck for the at your beck and call coaches corner here. And uh, coach, I was going to say I was anticipating you to be in shorts, but apparently when when October comes around, you put on the long pants. Well, up here I do. <laughs> and after last week, that was silly. I don't know what I was thinking. So yeah, I got them on today. As you, oh my goodness. Well, you look good today. Well, coach, I go to talk about a little bit about last week. Good win, sixty six to thirty over. Safe to say, a feisty Roosevelt football team. Would that be a correct way? They're they're going to beat some football teams in the PIL. There's no doubt about it. They have some athletes on that side, on the other side of the um, sideline over there. But talk about the game last week and how pleased you were with your team's performance. Well, I really was, and I thought you know we kind of we kind of found our footing a little bit offensively, and then got into a rhythm and executed offensively really well. I thought our running backs ran the ball well. I thought our offensive line got off the ball a lot better. Still could get a little pad level down a little bit more. But um, Logan Goings, really some great balls, and Luke McCulletta coming out party, and it was his birthday week, so that was awesome. And uh, and we just really executed really well, and, and we played good defense for the first half, you know, but then things happen in the second half sometimes. Well, a win's a win, right? Darn right it is. So, Coach, uh, Mitch and I have been starting to call your, your team a field of poison ivy because oh. you guys have so many uh, different weapons out there, and if you're not careful, uh, teams can find themselves in a tough spot here, but there's a couple of folks that I want to recognize, and I want to get your thoughts here. First, a guy that we haven't talked about a lot, but kind of came out of nowhere, Luke McCola. Talk a little about, <laughs> about his impact, not you know on the defensive side, but also just as a player and as a student in the classroom. Oh, he He's awesome. I mean, you can't find a better quality. I, I, they said, give me a quote for Luke McCullough last week, the newspaper, and I said, great ball player, better person. Yeah. And he's just one of the nicest young men you're ever going to meet. Class act, kind, super intelligent, total team player, unselfish, and a good ball player. A lot like Edelman. You know? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Another player that Mitch and I were talking about uh, during the pregame show, but also the postgame show, a gentleman that doesn't get really the pub that he should get because he does all the little things really, really well, and that's Peter Zahari, oh. a, a, a guy that doesn't yeah. doesn't get that, that, that stat number there, yeah. but the guy I, I always consider, he's a guy I want in the foxhole, it's a guy I want to go into battle with. He almost strikes me as a, a, a yes, sir type of a player. Oh, absolutely. I mean, him. it, it figures that him and Luke McCullough are best friends, yeah. right? And Peter <laughs> Peter is really, when you watch Peter on film, he shows up instantly, and he is a dangerous weapon. We just haven't utilized him offensively as much as we should. Maybe tonight, maybe a little bit more. Okay, okay look for him. Yeah. Uh, and, but defensively, he's had a couple outstanding games also, and he's on the field a lot, making a lot of plays, and he's just the greatest guy. Great leadership. Uh, no nonsense and good genetics. His dad played running back at University of Oregon for Coach Bros. Mm -hmm. Well, you can certainly tell when I had walked by him there. I said, "That's a good football." You can just tell he's a football player. He just he just has that knack for the football. Let's switch from the offensive side to the defensive side, Coach. You've only given up this year 87 points this year. That's not, that's not. Let's make it like a true uh, uh, defensive coordinator there. Um, that's ninth in the state there. What what do you guys attribute that to when it comes to you know, holding teams and making things difficult for them out there. I mean, I mean, what do you attribute that to? Well, first of all, it's, it's attributed to our defensive coordinator, Alex Melson, and our secondary coach, uh, Aaron Kinsey, and our defensive line coach, John Taylor. I mean, there's other coaches, too, in, in the mix, but those guys have done a phenomenal yeah. job with our kids. And then instilling the culture of, of being physical and being tough and running to the ball and getting 11 hats on the ball and keeping your leverage and doing all those little fundamental things right that maybe some teams maybe don't spend the time on. But Coach Melson and his defensive staff spend a lot of time on defensive fundamentals and getting kids in the right place to make plays. Have a non-league game halfway through the year. Coming in here to the Mount Hood Conference, the Barlow Bruins, 3-1. and one. Yeah. Good football team. Yeah. Talk about the Barlow Bruins, what our fans can anticipate, and things that we need to, they need to look out for. Well, Barlow is tough. I mean, Coach Summerfield, one of the greatest guys, let alone a great coach, but just one of the greatest guys ever. Uh, and he's been here a long time. You know, he came in after I was here. 22 years he's been here. Yeah. Oh, man, I <laughs> it's been a long time since I was here, right? So, uh, but he's just really done a great job with the program, and their kids play hard, mm -hmm. they're physical, they're tough. <laughs> I mean, they're kind of country kids, yeah. you know, even though they're kind of in the suburbs, but they're kind of country tough, mm -hmm. and they're going to play tough. They've got a really good uh, quarterback in Jaron Hunter. Mm -hmm. He's outstanding, throws the ball, he RPOs, yeah, and he puts it on a dime. Um, they've got some good skill kids, but really what it gets down to is they play hard, and they play physical, and if you don't bring your lunch pail, yeah. you're going to get it. You know, and it's, 
you know, coach, it's always it, when you watch a football team that's that's tough. Does it get you nervous at times to think that sometimes my boys might get a little bright in the headlights, or are they focused, ready to go? No, I think they're focused, ready to go. I think you know that West Salem game. You're playing one of the best teams in the state in West Salem, and and you know coming coming from behind and beating Newburg, who's a really good little ball ball team. They're three and one also right now, and you know getting getting that toughness and believing that they're tough too, you know, and getting that hey we're not. You know, not, not to be disrespectful to the PIL, but we're not we're not cons- we're not even worried about that type of stuff. We're yeah. worried about statewide, mm-hmm. you know, and we want to be considered one of the better teams in the state, not just in the city. Well, coach, four and one here in about three hours. <laughs> oh gosh, that'd be great. Uh, I'd love it here. Head coach John Beck will take another time out here. When we come back, Mitch and I will provide our pregame thoughts. We're live here at the brand new stadium here at Barlow High School. Live coverage of Grant football right here on the Grant Sports Network. Hi fans, did you know that one in three people notice somebody's smile right when they meet for the first time? Turn to Parkside Orthodontics if you're not confident in your smile. Dr. Rebecca Cooperstein, a board certified orthodontist in Portland, Oregon, and a neighborhood favorite for braces. Dr. Cooperstein is committed to providing the highest quality orthodontic treatment for all ages in a caring, comfortable environment. Parkside Orthodontics is a state-of-the-art digital office with advanced technology to provide superior results. They also provide a convenient finance option that requires no additional down payment and offers lower monthly payments. If you want to turn that frown upside down, visit Parkside Orthodontics. Welcome back to beautiful Barlow High School as the Three and one generals and the fighting visors and John Becks looking to make it four and one on the year. But tonight they roll into a very good three and one football team. As you heard there in the at your beck and call coach's corner, Mitch, Coach Beck talked about the toughness of Barlow High School here. In your mind here, what's the biggest focus when you're coming into a contest? When you're playing a team that's extremely physical, what does Coach Beck have to do to get his his team, one, to match the intensity, but also that physicality? Yeah, being on the road, you know, you really got to hype your guys up. You got to make sure you're you're absolutely laser-like focused during the day. It's not just, you know, uh, these guys are at school for the most part. You know, these guys are, are participating during class. So it's it's uh, it's something you really have to, to make sure these guys are, are grabbed from the from the focal point the evening before so it really starts last night you know uh with the with the the younger guys going throughout the week and the scout team's got to give them a good look throughout the week make sure that they're uh, uh, a little extra chippy if you will when you're playing the uh, the country boys is is uh, as coach beck likes to refer to these guys as is uh, the country city city country boys we'll call them <laughs> urban cowboys All there right. you go Buck 48 left here as both teams will come out to the center of the field as it's homecoming night here at Barlow High School is that those young boys and young girls will elect who should wear that crown and wear that sash. But we got ourselves a a good one. Mitch, one more question before we take another break here. We talked about one player that stood out last week, Luke McCullough, five catches, 200 yards. You had said last week that he was the X factor last week. He was the difference maker in the game. A lot of people thought when Tamon Davis, the speedster, went down with an injury with that collarbone, who was going to step up? Who was going to make that play? In your mind, does a Luke McCullough have to continue to bring that level of play to make this football team even better? I think you're right. You know, I, I mean, it's something that Coach really attests to. He, he, he really is not concerned about that. He's really not concerned about Luke really stepping up into that leadership role. It's something that kind of comes natural to him as he, he's a guy that, you know, you can go out and have a conversation with and also go over throw the football around. He's a, uh, not just a, a football player. For he, he wants to be able to provide a, a different outlook. He's not just be uh, labeled as a football. He's great in the classroom, as we've spoke about here this broadcast. So it's really going to be interesting to see if he can continue this performance from last week. We're about 20 seconds away until we kick this one off. The Generals will receive. We're live here at Barlow High School as you're watching live coverage of Grant football right here on the Grant Sports Network. 
I think I've always known he was going to do something like this. He did not want to do active duty because he wants to do college first. I think that was the biggest thing for him, instead of waiting and then doing college after. One of the differences I noticed when he came back from basic training, he was more organized in how he's going about things a little bit. I know he commented that a lot of things his classmates would do that he didn't bother him before, but now he realizes, you know, because he's been outside of high school, I think maybe he's a little more responsible. He's thinking about his future a lot more. He talks about it and uh, the different possibilities. And he mentioned the ROTC program as well. And he said, you know, I could graduate as an officer. And so I was kind of excited when he mentioned that he could do that as well. I would just tell people, you know, if they're son or daughter was considering the National Guard that I think it's a great opportunity. I think it's something that... And we are underway here at Barlow High School as the Bruins in their traditional blue and white with yellow lids. And this one is a good kick, not very deep, and that one is brought all the way out to the 30-yard line, and that's where quarterback Logan going who has continued to do a phenomenal job all season long, being that general, as they always say, out there on the field. Mitch, how great has the play of Logan going been all season long? I mean, you just have to say the guy just commands the field so well. well I think we, he's the best quarterback we've really seen here this season, uh, regardless of which team he's playing for. He's, uh, he's just a guy that really commands a lot from his team, and we're going to get to see here the first play of the evening right now. So going in his traditional gun, man to the left. And he will give it to Jay Sean. Jay Sean out past the 35 and scampers his way all the way down to the 38-yard line. And Mitch, I mean, that seems to be the, the, the play that John Beck always calls there on first down. Get first the ball, down. Get the ball in the hands of your athlete on first play. And you can certainly see that uh, they got a little moxie on their step right now. Yeah, exactly. And, and really, that was just a, a simple counter play they ended up getting about eight yards on. We're just underway here, 11.30. Mitch Pukite, Brian Gregg, Brody, the man behind the lens, the wizard. As Logan going, will go into the gun. And looking for a man. Rolls out near side. And he will keep this one underneath his arm himself. Pick up the first down. And the Generals have their first first down of the game. Just a smart play there by Logan. By, when he's rolling out, it's not his comfortable side. He's moving to his left. He sees the defender actually fall down and thought he saw his man open there just for a split second. Decided to keep it. Had the first down already. He knew he was going to get the first down, move the chains, decided to keep it well played. Bruins come in 3-1. and one. Their lone loss on the year was against Tiger, the number one team in the state. As going, we'll give it again. And this time it's a whole pack of Bruins. As the Generals will lose about five yards on the play there. As the Generals uh, playing with their hair on fire a little bit there, Mitch. Yeah, the Bruins really, they blew up the line there. Uh, the, the, the linebacker there, Carson Jensen, ended up getting through the line and making the play. I think he's actually more of a, of a, of a guard there, an, uh, a defensive lineman. I thought he was coming back from the linebacker position, but it was in a different number. That was 24, not 54. Give to the speed, sir. Far hand side. And he will get back to the initial line of scrimmage. So John Beck and quarterback Logan going now looking at their first third down of the game as the faucet has been turned off a hair by Mother Nature. As last week when we started the Roosevelt game, Mother Nature uh, decided to turn on the faucet last week, but uh, halfway through she decided to turn it off. Potentially we'll have the uh, the same weather situation here tonight. Well, big third down coming up here for the Generals, and it's about a nine-yard gain. They need to move the chains. Going in the gun, looking for his man, and it is incomplete. As that is just out of the hands, and so that will bring up a fourth down and nine, so it will bring up the first punting situation. And so after the excellent first down by Logan going, they're unable to capitalize after the Bruins forced a second long, and the Generals were never unable to recover. So the first punt of the contest for the Generals, 
And the Bruins will be looking at their first offensive possession. Absolute dime there by Logan. Just threw it right on the money. Put it in the position there where his tall receiver can get that. And I know that that receiver wants that ball back there. Hit his hands. Hit him right in the palms. Marco Vlasky will be the man responsible. And this one will take a general's bounce. And it will be finally touched down at about the 45-yard line. And that's where the Bruins will take over with 9.28 to go. And we'll keep it right here as uh, there was a... Uh, a bit of a miscommunication there, Mitch, on, yeah. the, on that punt there. It seemed that the guys couldn't figure out the, to get down on the ball. Well, it was, uh, unfortunately, it was a, a, a back style kick there and, and something that really only netted him 10 yards. So we've got to look for a better effort there out of the, out of the punter in their uh, next go around. Jaron Hunter is the gunslinger. Three year starter commitment to Oregon State to play baseball. As Jaron will keep it himself. A little shifty. And gets all the way down to general territory. So, Jaron showing some athleticism. I believe they went through a, a wildcat uh, formation there with number three. He was the ball carrier uh, and actually received the, the snap on that one there. I think... It was three and not thirteen there. Thank you, Mitch. I didn't. It was that would have been uh, Durham Sunberg, and this time again it will be the keeper with Jaron Hunter, and he will pick up about six yards. So, two plays, two keeps, two quarterback keeps, and that brings us to our first, second, and five for the Bruins. And easily a mistake there. Those guys are both very tall. They got about six three is what they get measured at. They're wearing three and one three for jersey numbers. And, and dynamic athletes, as you can see, they're just based off of those two plays back-to-back. So the Bruins got their first win of the year. As they beat Ben 34-8. to Following week, they fell to Tiger. Then they took on Gresham, beat them handily 62-6. to And McNary 21-9 to as Jaron will throw the ball for the first time. And that will be enough for a Bruin first down. As the pass was caught by Josh Nami, a 5'7 senior, and that'll move the chains for the Bruins. Just an excellent route there by the receiver. He ended up going, it's a five yard and back. He ends up going six so he can make sure he gets to the first down, make sure he can move the chains here and get him, his team into position there for a first down. Bruins running that forever favorite run pass option, and so many teams find themselves running this. Last week we saw Roosevelt running the triple option, but now we're back more to the mainstream of offense as Jaron, second pass of the game, has got a man wide open, and he was unable to connect there as the pass was intended for his receiver on the right-hand side, Tyler Porzati, as he was streaking down the left-hand side, but he might have slipped over there. Yeah, I think the, uh, the turf gopher got him on that one. Somebody came up and tripped him up there, uh, a green hand, I think, came out of the turf. Really saved uh, the generals. Uh, probably a score on that one. He was pretty wide open. He was on a streak. He wasn't going to be caught. Trips right, one at the top. Jaron in the gun. And he will give it to his big man, and he's met. He is met in the backfield as Nick Collins was unable to get anywhere there on that play. Caden Siegel there on the stop, man. Really blew up the line, ended up... Uh, getting through and getting staying lower than the offensive lineman is able to ruin that play there for the Bruins. So 7.20 here in the first. We're just underway. As the Generals looking to get to 4-1 and one on the year. And look at the air raid approach that the Bruins take here. They all, they all pause. They look at the sideline. They look for their call from, uh, from their coach there, Terry Summerfield. And he's uh, able to get that in there quick enough. Jaron's going to keep this one himself. And he will scamper all the way down to the 30-yard line. Penalty flag flies. But it looks like the flag came in right when the tackle began to, to be made there. I wonder, I hope it's not a, a face mask of some sort. Coach Beck certainly has uh, talked about penalties being the Achilles heel for his team. West Salem was not the most clean football game as we had we had seen but in this situation here the 
penalty will be committed against the Bruins, and so that will negate the run there by Jaron. I think if I if I'm not mistaken, he gave the block in the back signal, which is an interesting call when you get out that far away from the tackles. There, a block in the back is difficult to do. So somebody really reaching. So the Bruins, also three and one on the year, they're looking to move to four and one in the Mount Hood Conference. Many people oftentimes refer to the the Rams of Central Catholic to be the, the team to beat, but boy, you certainly can't count out the Barlow Bruins. The last time the Bruins found themselves in a state championship has never happened. However, they did make it to the semifinals in 1991. Coach Summerfield has been around for 22 years and nothing would mean more. Jaron has a man left hand side and that same play and this time it is caught as Nick Collins, the big fullback, running the wheel route, and he's able to pick up the big first down. You know, that was just a really an excellent throw uh, uh, there by uh, by 1-3. And uh, the reason why is you can see the, the safety was over the top, well covered. Unfortunately, they had two receivers in the same area, and, uh, and the receiver was able to get past the linebacker, and therefore the, the safety has to choose one or the other, and the quarterback's going to pick that apart. Well, certainly remember that play call, Mitch, because once again, a holding penalty will push the Bruins back even further to make it a third down and 26. So after the excellent throw and catch, it has now been negated by an unfortunate holding penalty. So third down, 26. Jaron forced out of the pocket. Got to make a decision. And this one will be caught at midfield, well short of the first down marker. And so the Generals will hold, and that will bring up a fourth down in the first punting situation for the Bruins. You know, Jaron, he's really got to be a smarter quarterback than that. It's, th it's third and 26. It's an obvious punt situation if you're not connecting on some sort of deep throw. He's running towards the sideline. Just get rid of the ball there. See the next play. Stay alive. Don't take the hit. So first punting situation here. As Jay Sean Pete, who was no stranger to the end zone last Friday night, will stand at his own 25-yard line. And Jay Sean will let this one go, and it takes a Bruin bounce. And this one will go all the way down to the one-yard line, and that's where Logan going will take over. We'll be back. You're watching live coverage of Grant Football right here on the Grant Sports Network. Hi, Grant General fans. These broadcasts would not be possible without the wonderful support of our great local companies. One company in particular that I want to recognize is Squires Electric Incorporated, which was founded in 1998. Through 20 years of dedication, Squires has provided excellent workmanship, extraordinary service, and have surrounded themselves with the best electricians in the industry. It's one of the company's core values to support the community, and they're proud to be able to enrich the lives of children and help provide the tools needed to succeed. Visit Squires Electric Incorporated, a proud... Welcome back to the broadcast here. Mitch Bukite to my left. Brian Gregg here. Gino Zohari, the man, the engineer to my right over here. As the generals are deep in their own territory... And this time they will give it off to their running back. And the Bruins are there for a safety at their own one-yard line. Coach Beck wants to go with the run call, and unfortunately it uh, will put two points on the board for the Bruins. And I can't disagree with the run call itself. One thing I do disagree with is the fact that they decided to call the, the same play they, they ran on every single first down here thus far being on the offensive side of the ball. And, and I'm not exactly sure if he was planning on uh, um, fooling the defense there, but he's in the same formation running the same play with the same option. I'm not exactly sure what he was anticipating happening there. That's the second safety of the year. Let us put two points on the board for the opposition. The other one was against West Salem when the punt snap went over Blasco's head. Well, they and almost called that a uh, touchback. And yes. then they finally did uh, review that there as a, a collective group and come up with the correct call of being a safety. 
So 6-19 to go in the first, and you had yourself a baseball score here thus far, 2-0. Well, you just you really don't like seeing them getting bailed out there. They're third and 26. They throw the ball away. They got to punt it. They end up getting a very lucky bounce. It goes down to about the one centimeter line down there, right by the goal line. They get a safety right off the bat there. Just kind of some bad luck. So the Bruins will get it back. And the, it will be taken at the 35-yard line, and a whole plethora of blue shirts will be there. And so the Bruins will now take over at their own 36-yard line. So, you know, really, Mitch, not really the the start you had probably anticipated here. But, right. you know, the, the Generals have certainly been in these situations before. They certainly have learned their lessons that when you take an unfortunate safety that there's nothing to really get nervous about. Just go back out there and play some defense. Yeah, and starting your drive here on, on, on the 47-yard line, it's really cut your playing field in half and, uh, one one little drop over the top here. You, so you got to make sure your safeties are playing back on their heels. Jaron Hunter, third pass of the game. Once again, this one is complete to Kyle Markham, the 6'1 senior. And you can definitely tell, Mitch, that the athleticism of Jaron, that's a pretty good gunsling. You can just well, tell when he lets that ball go. That's a senior-to-senior -senior connection. He's been doing a long time right there. Did he not stick his back foot in the ground there and throw that ball right to uh, to number three there, Durham Sunberg, and he was hitting. That, that was a timing route. I believe that's what they call a timing route, and that was done well. So short of the first down marker, so second and one. As Jaron will send two to the top, two at the bottom. Give it to his back in the backfield. That's Josh Nomi. And the 5'7 will scat back there, picks up the first down. For the Bruins, so really thus far, it's kind of been all all Bruins. Of Scat course. back. Well, I like that, man. I haven't heard that term in a while. I love it. Yeah, you know, and, and we'll see what we get really out of this connection here, the uh, the Durham-Sunberg to Jaron Hunter connection. I, I think it's going to be pretty substantial here this evening. 5-11 to go here in the first. You're watching live Grant football right here on the Grant Sports Network. As Mitch and I will bring you all the action and the wonderful friends of Grant Football making this possible. Jaron on first down got a man, and this one is incomplete just off the fingertips as he was looking again for Durham Sandberg, as Mitch alluded to, a name that we will continue, I anticipate, to say multiple times throughout this contest. Was that a defensive effort there or what? Man, that's some focus there. You talk about having John Beck and his team focus here this evening. They're, they really showed there with Jay Sean going out and really being a, a, a guy that he didn't have the time to turn around and really uh, hawk the ball there while he was in air, but he was able to make the athletic play. When he almost made the catch, he was able to knock that loose. So Coach Beck and the Fighting Generals. Looking to second down and 10. High snap. And the General's doing a great job. And this time Josh Nami breaks a tackle in the backfield. And he scampers us all the way down to the 25-yard line as the Generals were there to make the play as Caden Seagal. But he was un could not bring him down. And when you thought it was going to be a loss of seven, it's rather a first down for the Bruins. Well, isn't that th this is why it's the ultimate team game out there. You got Jay Sean makes an excellent play on the ball with the, uh, about a 30-yard attempt there uh, from the Bruins. And then he come up and he miss about three tackles there, and he's able to make a move and get to the outside and break it down for about a 20-yard gain. So the Generals get their first score of the game, knocking on the screen door. Now they're look, they look knock on the front door. Inside trap. This is Nick Collins, and he will scamper his all the way down to the 18-yard line. And so the Bruins in that big offensive line up front is really having no uh, issue moving that football, Mitch. Well, they got some big boys down there, some guys that don't skip very many meals. I'll tell you what, they got a couple guys that go over three bills. And they're showing it here. They're getting some pretty good push up front. And what push they're not getting, the defensive guys are coming through too fast as they're over-pursuing and, uh, and allowing those, the, 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 excuse me, the running back to get by. So they go 330, 300, 283, 20, 275. So when you want to talk about big boys up front, Jaron, pump fake, got a man, oh, touchdown. Man. What an effort. Jackson Kane, the tight end, the man in motion, down the seam. And he gets the Bruins back on the board 
And that'll make it an 8 nothing ball game. And just like that, the Bruins go down the field. And, boy, that was a pretty darn good drive right there. I'll tell you what, that was an absolute dime there. And, and, and as we mentioned before, I guess that's kind of the baseball aspect coming in. Is he, <laughs> he was, uh, that was a, uh, about as good a throw as you're going to see here at this level of football. And uh, just a great effort there by both individuals. And I am a bit too late as that will come off the scoreboard there as there was a holding penalty, Mitch. It was a late flag. Oh, I didn't. I did not see it, and it was a late flag, and so the touchdown will be negated. Wow. And so rather than putting six on the board, it will leave it at a 2 nothing score. So the Generals dodge a bullet there, but after a great throw and catch from Jaron to Kane, it is negated. High snap. And the Bruins will just pick this one up, and they will be taken back all the way to their own 44-yard line. So a change in scenery, Mitch, Boy. as they started out with six on the board, plus two is eight. Now the high snap. Now they're looking down the barrel of a third down and forever. Man, you forgot to tighten the lug nut on that drive here. Uh, this is uh, two massive mistakes Back to back, I'm not exactly sure. They they got to make sure they uh, uh, get the snap off there. You might see him. You know, you only see him going shotgun. You might see him go up there and grab a couple snaps there to get the confidence back up from the center. How many times in your life on a broadcast you use the word lug nut? And I'm impressed. <laughs> that is impressive to use the word lug nut on a broadcast. <laughs> you know, you got to sneak it in every now and then. Jaron deep looking, still looking. And he will complete this one to his receiver on the left-hand side, and that'll be Carter Beggs. And he will be pushed out of bounds short of the first down marker. But good backyard football there, Mitch, as Mr. Beggs noticing that Jaron was forced out of the pocket. And so he uh, made a nice throw and catch, but uh, just short of the first down marker. You're going to be chasing Jaron all evening here. He's such a dynamic athlete. He's bigger than excuse me he's taller than everybody out there he's not bigger than everybody but he's a he's a good tall thick i believe they have him listed uh here at about over 200 pounds 6'3 over 200 pounds so you're going to be chasing him in and out of the pocket here all evening so head coach terry summerfield is going to go for this one has the first fourth down brian what, excuse ahead. me go i, ahead, I do apologize there what do you think about this call here as a for the Bruins going for it on fourth down. I'm just uh, curious what you think. Well, I tell you what, and I'll give you your thoughts when we come back from this break. We'll be back yeah. in 30 seconds. You're watching live coverage of Grant Football right here on the Grant Sports Network. Fans, are you in the market for a new home? Maybe you're looking to downsize. Maybe you're looking to increase your square footage. But look no further than to Tammy Going of Windermere Realtors, a parent of one of our wonderful athletes and sponsor that's been serving Northeast Portland for many years. She's an advocate for our students and student athletes and generously gives her time and energy to those in need. Friends of Grant Football is grateful for community members that value the experience of sports and education in the high school process. If you're in the need of a real estate agent, you would be lucky to have Tammy Going represent you through Windermere Realtors. Welcome back to Barlow High School in the beautiful new stadium. For many, many years, the Bruins had to play at Mount Hood Community College, Mitch. And just this year, they have their own stadium to give it that community feel. And, and uh, fans and proud student body coming out to support their Bruins here as they are looking at their first fourth down of the game. As the Bruins, Jaron down the middle, and this one will be incomplete, so the generals <laughs> hold. And so after what looked to be a touchdown on the board four plays ago has now turned into a turnover on possessions, and just like that, the Generals will retain oh, position. Oh, boy, what a stick by my guy, Alex Gray. <laughs> i tell you what, last week he really put it on a show for everybody to watch here at Franklin High. He was able to, again, he's got this special, unique characteristic that goes about him where he can watch three different things he's got two eyeballs i'm not exactly sure how he does it but he's a special guy out there on the defensive side there he, again he's off that in that lonely island he's playing defense and about five yards back there on that last there he was able to make the, the tackle there and unable for the receiver to make the catch so the general's looking to get on the board is going will keep this one himself re 
read option, and he will scamper his way down all the way past the 25-yard line and finally be pushed out of bounds at the 28-yard line. And, Mitch, we certainly saw that last week. We certainly saw that Logan likes that read option, almost that veer option where he attacks the end, make the end, make the decision. That's a really effective football play, especially when you have the athleticism of Logan. Yeah, you got to keep yourself protected, though. And you got to, as the, the game develops, you have got to figure out is the defense stepping up as you pitch, as you fake the pitch, or as you keep the football? As Logan will send, Don't Luke in motion. Swing pass. Luke spins off one man and hits the R2 button on the PlayStation controller, Ooh. and he'll get his way all the way down to about the 26-yard line. So they will now look at a third down and two. So third downs have been really the storyline thus far here in the first quarter, Mitch. Certainly a third down conversion here would be huge, especially being in their own deep in their own territory. Yeah, it's just a great play there by Luke Picola. And, and I wasn't terribly impressed with the throw from Luke. He got it, made the completion. Just a better offensive play there by Luke to not take the loss. Third down and a long two. Empty backfield. And Logan's going to keep this one himself. And he runs into a whole wall and a whole cave of Bruins. And I don't know if he got it, Mitch, and it doesn't look like he did. So on the third and short, the Bruins hold, and that will bring up a fourth down and one. Really <laughs> an impressive play by Carson Jensen, a name we've uh, uh, discussed here a few times this evening. He really hit the gap there as in, uh was able to hit the B gap. Uh, excuse Excuse me, yes, the B gap on the defensive side there and make the play. Logan not able to get to the first down. So the Generals, once again, forced to punt. And this time it's a much better punt. Not very high. And this will take a Generals bounce. And so the Bruins will take over at their own 44-yard line. We'll take a quick timeout, and we'll be back in 30 seconds. You're watching live coverage of Grant football right here on the Grant Sports Network. Welcome back to Barlow High School, and these broadcasts would not be possible without our wonderful friends of Grant Football, but also the businesses in the community that donate their hard-earned treasure to allow these young men to play in front of their parents and fans, but also gear them up with great helmets and uniforms, and that last uh, sponsor there was Scott Huma, so thank you so much to Scott for uh, your wonderful contribution to to uh, to Grant football. So with 58 seconds to go here in the first, and you got yourself a 2-0 ball game, as Jaron will go into the gun again, give it off to his man in the backfield. That's Jake Fay, and as the sophomore scampers his way all the way down to midfield. So really, Mitch, I mean, Barlow's got a lot of different guys that have touched the football here in this football game. Yeah, hey, you got to like that, too. I mean, you, if you could put together a bunch of different pairs of hands that can get their the, the, their palms there on the football, make a play, hey, more, more, more power to you. So the clock will continue to wind down here as, as we're up here at the very top of the stadium so we have a pretty good view of the field as mother nature has lightened her tears a bit as the rain will start to subside as i believe we had a a situation where a equipment malfunction so the officials doing a nice job recognizing that so the clock will oh. start and i anticipate this will be the last play of the first quarter here it's jaron in the gun double tight and he will give it again to his running back in the backfield. And Jake Fay will pick up about three yards. And so he will be looking at a third down and two. We'll take the timeout at the end of one. Generals find themselves down two to nothing. You're watching live coverage of Grant football right here on the Grant. 
Sports Network. Fans, you all know that giving back to your community can be one of the most gratifying things one can feel. But one person in particular is Kenneth Acker, former Grant alum athlete and NFL player for the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Kenneth Acker founded the Ackright Foundation as he brought his generosity to Friends of Grant Football as a gold level sponsor this year as he helps our players with the important equipment they need to be safe and effective. The Ackright Foundation also sponsored the first Grant hosted 7 on 7 tournament this year. Kenneth Acker and the Ackright Foundation has been an incredible example to our players of what can be accomplished through hard work in sports and education. Big thank you to the Ackright Foundation and the generosity of Kenneth Acker, Grant alum. Fans, if you're just now joining us, that score is correct. Two to nothing. As the Generals found themselves in their own end zone earlier in this football game. And that's where we have landed here at the start of the second quarter. As Mitch Bukite, myself, Brian Gregg, bringing you all the action. And we're glad that you can be a part of it. As that, as Mitch had said to me during the break there, that this game feels like there's been more scoring. But you look up at the scoreboard, and it looks like a start to a basketball game. Well, you know, and that's what I was wondering, if uh, we're actually watching a, a football game here or a baseball game. I feel like we're watching maybe the uh, the NLDS <laughs> <laughs> this evening. It's 2-0, two to, two to zero and, and we've got a full second quarter of football here yet to play. And, and you got to hope that these guys can really sh- continue showing the, the defensive effort they've really been putting forth, just a few chunk plays that they got to eliminate. But I think we got a, a, a things handled here for the second quarter. So start of the second as Jaren's got a man down the sideline and incomplete as the Generals dodged a bullet there as Carter Baggs had a step on his man there. And, boy, they dodged a bullet as Alex Gray unfortunately got his hips turned there the wrong way. And Jaron found a wide open Carter Baggs but was unable to haul that one in. It looks like Alex is looking toward the middle of the field like he was expecting some sort of help there, but the safety was in no position to give him help. I'm not sure if he was. there was a mistake in uh, a a defensive call there. If he was playing cover three and the safeties were playing cover two, I'm not exactly sure there. Uh, But definitely some confusion is uh, he should not have, one, he shouldn't have missed that football. Hits you in the hands. You've got to make that that catch there. Just a great throw by Jalen. Empty backfield, three at the top, two at the bottom. Jared in the gun, and this one will be complete. And again, that connection is continued as Jaron with such a strong arm back there looks so composed and the ability that throwing motion looks pretty athletic and you can certainly tell that he will be able to take his talents to Oregon State next year as he'll be playing baseball and you can see that that strong arm. He's got such a, a great footwork that goes about him there. He can go laterally and you'll see him when he when he steps back. It's a, it's a one, two, three, throw the ball motion. So we're going to get a penalty here on this play. So my main man, Caden Siegel, a little too excited there on the roller skates as he fell his way forward there. So that will bring up a first down and five. Third penalty of the game committed against the Generals. And so now the Bruins knocking on the door once again. Can't lose focus. Just that little small moment right there. You lose focus. You give your team up five five extra yards, and your back's against the wall here. No room for any mistakes. Drake Payne in motion to the right-hand side. Reverse, and the Bruins have got some running room here down the sideline. And he will march his way all the way down to the 17-yard line as Reese McKenzie... The 5'6", 150-pound junior getting into the action here. And you could certainly see that play develop up, up, up here, Mitch. You saw it coming, and the Bruins did a nice job there, and they pick up another first down. Yeah, nice little stutter step there. He was able to uh, make Jackson, Monfort, uh, make, miss the tackle there, excuse me, and get around him there, able to move the chains, get the next first down for his team. Excellent job. Bruins at the general 18-yard line. Double tight. Two at the top, and he will give it off to again to his shifty little back. And that's Jake Fay again. And he will get all the way down to about the 16-yard line. 
And another penalty flag flies, and I didn't get a chance to see what the call was, Mitch. Well, they call it is a chop block on the defense. I'm not exactly sure how that. Um, I guess I'm looking for more of an explanation here. I, I'm not exactly sure how you can do that on the defensive side of the football. His indication, maybe he's going to correct himself here. Well, certainly, Mitch, to your point, you don't really see a block below the waist on the defensive side of the ball, but obviously the officials found it blatant enough to throw the hanky there on the field. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Brian. I'm not exactly sure if I've ever seen that called. Generals are going to take a timeout. We will join them. 11-11 to go here in the second. Bruins on top by two. You're watching live coverage of Grant football right here on the Grant Sports Network. Hi fans, Brian and Mitch here for Moon and Sixpence. After every broadcast, Mitch and I are fired up, generally after a huge general victory. But we also find ourselves a little bit hungry. And where do we turn? We turn to Moon and Sixpence as Mike and Mary Marshall are parents of one of our great top senior players and proud owners of the Moon and Sixpence. They generously offer up their establishment every year to help friends of Grant football fundraise, provide team dinners, and host coaches' meetings. The Grant community is very lucky to have this area favorite that supports the neighborhood, players, and families. Moon and Six Pens is a charming, classic English pub offering cast condition ales. Welcome back. Mitch Bukite, Brian Gregg here on a drizzly October evening as the generals has found themselves playing a lot of defense in this football game as the Bruins have done a really nice job mixing up the pass and run with a lot of different players on the field that can make a lot of different plays and I think that's really been the storyline thus far for the Bruins the balanced attack Mitch What's incredible is how athletic their entire offensive line really really is. And you're seeing the effect of the rain here uh, affect the Bruins much more than the Generals. But it's definitely becoming a, a big major factor here in this ballgame. As Jaron was looking for his man on the near side, Carter Bags again. But he was unable to haul that one in. And so, Jaron, I'm sure... Thought that that one might have been for six, and Carter walks his way back to the. You really want an easy way to uh, upset your coach is to miss footballs, let them go through, and look at your hands like you're worried about how wet the football is. It's not going to be any drier for the other side. The other team, they, they're really um, got to look at it. you got to stay focused. you got to go one point at a time. Catch the ball, come down with it. Catching the ball has got to be the vital point uh, of, the, of the first effort there. Catch the ball first, come down, stay in bounds, make the play. However, the touchdown would have been negated as a another penalty there. That was a holding call on the Bruins, so that will march them back. So now they're looking at a first and goal from the general 21. Jaron got to get rid of it out of the pocket, looks downfield and trying to get it to his man over on the left-hand side, Josh Nomi, and that one is incomplete there. So... Josh is playing some backyard football, as they always say, when you see your quarterback roll out, get to the sideline, and he did that there, but unfortunately he was unable to haul that one in. Stripes missed a bad, bad holding call there. They, I, I'm not exactly sure how you miss it. He was in the backfield going towards the, the runner and getting pulled behind, so I'm not exactly sure how he didn't get the holding call. I missed the number, but there was definitely a holding call that was missed. Very upsetting now. Well... I think certainly in this second quarter it has been anything you can do, I can do better. But unfortunately, it's something that uh, the coaches never like, and that's penalties, Mitch. <laughs> At least it's balanced, right? <laughs> both uh -oh. both sides, uh, both teams is shooting themselves in the foot there. <laughs> that's why the score uh, remains 2-0. to zero. You never hear a balanced penalty attack. <laughs> <laughs> 11 minutes here in the second. Bruins knocking on the door. As we're looking at a second and goal, screen pass inside, got some real estate all the way inside the one, and Josh Nomi took a shot. 
and he gets all the way down to the goal line as they now look at a third down goal to go. You know, Jackson was uh, shook out of his shoes there earlier in this possession and really took out some frustration on that. Man, he laid a lick right there on the one-yard line. Boy, that young man jumped right up, but good play call there inside screen. And the Bruins are a yard away from making this an eight-point football game. Stack the Jared box. loses the snap, trying to get rid of it, breaks one tackle, and he gets close to the goal line, and he's in. So after the bot snap, the senior three-year starter finds his way into the end zone, and the Bruins have their first touchdown of the game. You know, I'd really like to see what John Beck and his defensive team was really uh, chalking up there. Is you'd like to see him stack the box. They really were playing like they were uh, uh, going for uh, some sort of fake there or draw play, but uh, I would like to see him stack the box there. They had one team really playing the goal line offense. you got to counter with the goal line defense, otherwise that's what you're going to get. On for the extra point is Abby Hoffman, and that kick is good. So the Bruins on top by nine. We'll take a timeout, but when we come back, the Bruins, excuse me, the Generals will receive live coverage, Grant Football, right here on the Grant Sports Network. Hi, fans. Did you know that one in three people notice somebody's smile right when they meet for the first time? Turn to Parkside Orthodontics if you're not confident in your smile. Dr. Rebecca Cooperstein, a board-certified orthodontist in Portland, Oregon, and a neighborhood favorite for braces. Dr. Cooperstein is committed to providing the highest quality orthodontic treatment for all ages in a caring, comfortable environment. Parkside Orthodontics is a state-of-the-art digital office with advanced technology to provide superior results. They also provide a convenient finance option that requires no additional down payment and offers lower monthly payments. If you want to turn that frown upside down, visit Parkside Picked it up, ran backwards and then forward. Welcome back to the broadcast here. As your generals find themselves in a bit of a hole, down nine. After Jaron found his way into the end zone for the first time in this game. As Jamison will take this one at his own 25-yard line in a whole wall of blue and yellow lids were right there to greet him and that's where Logan going will start but boy you know a, a, a second quarter that's been a lot of penalties and kind of sloppy football but uh, when you look up at the scoreboard there it, uh, you certainly think that uh, offensively they should have more points but the scoreboard doesn't reflect excuse me Brian why I ran it real quick if you are receiving the football on the football field and a kickoff get up the field you see too many guys that are watching tv and they watch the guys run from sideline to sideline get up the field get some positive yardage and then get down it's simple as that you're running too far from sideline to sideline get up the field and getting up the field is what the generals did there as going completes it to max von arks max von arks is the son of the president of Friends of Grant Football, Carmen Von Ark. So it's great to see that young man picking up a first down for the Generals. Has Logan got his team going, and he's got he's got his big freshman in the back there. And I believe that the Bruins have jumped offside here. And so that will push them an additional five yards. And that's what it looks like it is to be. That one was uh, a compliments of the offensive line there. You could see it was a, definitely a hard a hard count. They had no, uh, no plans of really snapping that football hard count. I think that was on three. It wasn't even on two. That was on three. Double tight. One at the top. One at the bottom. The big freshman and then the back going. Forced out oh, of the pocket. Got, the got to get rid of it. And he does and passes complete to the near side to my <laughs> man Peter Zahari. The tight end, Coach Beck, talked about in the in the coaches' show that we're going to get the ball to Peter Zahari. And right there, that pass was completed. Talked about it right there. He had some great looks. Unfortunately, it looks like we do maybe have a, a, penalized, a penalized player here on this last play. 
Really unfortunate because just an excellent catch. A lot of focus going in there by Peter, and it's really not easy to do. The rain's coming down. It's hitting in you in the face. It's hitting. It's getting in your in, in, on your face mask, making things tough to see, ca tough to catch the ball, and really tough to stay in bounds. So the the official in the white hat is instructed that it will be offsetting penalties as the generals were caught with holding. However, the Bruins were caught with a personal foul, so those penalties will offset, and we will leave it where we had it prior for the first down and five with 9.27 to go here. Going in the gun. Good protection here. Now he's forced out of the pocket, looking for a man downfield. Field. He'll tuck it and run, and he will get all the way down to the 42-yard line, just short of the first down marker. But, Mitch, you always talk about making smart decisions there, and right there Logan showed a smart decision by keeping the football. You know, and, and, and I've been waiting for him to do that all season. He's really he's showing some signs of, 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 of making those smart quarterback reads, of tucking the ball down, getting – you don't have to make that, that, uh, that video game play. Just get up the field, get four or five, get down, get to the next one. R2, 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 R2. I love it. All right, let's get something going here for going. One at the top, one at the bottom. And he will run that read option, picks up the first down in a few more. And so the Generals chipping away at that Bruin defense there. And we would certainly know that the visor coach Beck likes giving that read option, that was that speed option to Logan there, and he's a pretty effective runner there. I'm just going to allude to that, really. It's, he's got he's got something figured out right now, and and I hope that he continues pushing away there. Don't don't uh, exploit it too much here, and give the defensive coordinator for the Bruins too much of a look before you get into the second half. But he's got something figured out there on that far side of the field from us uh, at this point. Those orange posts, also known as the first down markers. We'll move, and this time we'll give it off to Sheesh. Sheesh all the way down to the 34-yard line. As the big freshman that a lot of people are excited about, about his bright future and his physicality. He had himself a wonderful run last week, mid 75 yards, where he <laughs> took that one all the way to the house. And, boy, when you get that freight train on the tracks, you better get off there because that's a big load coming through. Oh, man, does he want to hit you harder than you want to hit him? He's really going to be a special player here in the years to come. Big boy back there, big boy getting that ball. He's uh, he's bigger than Logan out there, I can tell you that. As Jack Parkman says in Major League Two, you better get off the track when the train's coming through. Oh. Going in the backfield, and he will be sacked for the first time in this game as the Bruins have been putting pressure on him most of the game, and this time they do get to him as Carson Jensen, the big fella, the junior, breaking through that front line and getting into the grill of going. That was really a, a, a coverage sack there. Was there they, they dropped about everybody, all the defensive backs, all the linebackers went back. It was a defensive, uh, excuse me, a coverage sack. Nowhere really to go for Logan. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the defensive lineman actually slipped a block also. However, the sack will be negated because of a penalty again on the Bruins. And so between penalties been somewhat of an effective way to move the football for the generals in this contest and any way you can get it here as the Bruins excuse me as the generals are knocking on the door as the ball will be placed at the Bruin 26 yard line three at the bottom one at the top going swing pass right hand side this is Luke Luke cross the field and he will run into the big fella as Jesse Wilson the big defensive lineman doing a nice job staying home, and so that'll bring up a second down and a unfortunate 15 yards. I'm going to rant here again here, Brian. you got to get up the field. I'm not exactly sure of what. He, he catches the football. Excellent catch. A little flare route. He catches it on the money right there, but Logan gives it to him right in the noose. And then all of a sudden, he decides to run laterally. Again, I understand it's a flare route. You have to make your move, but you got to get up field. These guys, for these young kids, anybody that's out here watching, listening, get up the field. Don't worry about the highlight play. Get up the field. North-south going in the gun. Pistol formation. 
Rolls out, looking backyard football. He's got to get rid of it. And he will scamper his way all the way down to the 20-yard line as the Bruins continue to play excellent secondary defense. And that will bring up a third down and a very manageable five yards here. So, once again, good decision-making there by Logan. You like to see that. You love to see it. And really, it was he got, uh, I don't want to say lucky, but he did uh, – catch a little bit of a break there as the defensive guy gave up on the play before it was actually over and was able to get in front of him. As the Bruin faithful come to their feet stomping on the bleachers here as they're trying to get a homecoming win but the generals have much more in store but right now they find themselves in a bit of a hole down nine but knocking on the door going pressure got to get rid of it and does and this one is complete to Max Von Arx and he will be short of the first down marker to bring up the fourth down in five here and Mitch I would anticipate here that you probably go for it right here yeah I would I would think that uh, John Beck he's going to actually go for it it looks like he's keeping the offense there on the field he's getting his Logan's getting the call uh, from John and in, in the offensive coordinator here, um, I just I'm a little unless they were planning on go for it the whole entire time. I'm I'm a little puzzled of why he called that play. It needs to be a quick maybe a bunch formation for the receivers. It needs to be quick snappy throw there. Fourth down and three here. Going end zone shot got a man. <laughs> Great play. Touchdown Generals. Luke Borchart down the seam and just like that the generals go down nine and they are a pat away from being down (laughs) two you saw it set up and you saw it it was right there was that an excellent fake or what (laughs) i still think the defense is still fooled they don't know who has the football you know they gave it to or they faked it they were able to keep it and the defense gave up again that was two times there two out of three plays the defensive they got to stay focused there uh, for the Bruins, they they lacked a lot of focus on that defensive effort there and was able to get by him in Bochart. Just an excellent uh, route there. So the Generals get their first touchdown of the game going to Bochart, and the Bruins will take a timeout. We will join them for 30 seconds. You're watching live coverage of Grand Football right here on the Grant Sports Network. Brian here for Grant Boosters, who help raise money for Grant's high school's many diverse clubs and athletic teams. Grant's clubs and teams keep our kids inspired, active, and connected. The success of Grant's clubs and teams would not be possible without the support of parents, friends, and family like you. Please donate today to continue these wonderful activities. Please go to Grant Gives. Going, going, Gone. Our baseball score, 2 nothing, is now 9-6, to six, looking more like a football score. As the Generals get on the board first with 4.53 to go here in the second quarter. After a going to my man, Luke Borchart, the 6-5 junior, getting to the back of the end zone for the first points of the game for the Generals. You really like to see him look that all the ways in, too. It's such an easy football to drop right now due to the weather. Wow, and the oh man, the Mister Flasky PAT will not be good. We'll take another timeout, but when we come back, the Generals will kick off to the Bruins, nine to six. You're watching live coverage of Grand Football. We'll be back. I think I've always known he was going to do something like this. He did not want to do active duty because he wants to do college first. I think that was the biggest down. Instead of waiting and then doing college after. Once I- Notice when he came was more organized. Welcome back, fans. We apologize for some unfortunate technical difficulties, but my main man, Gino Zahari, can do it all, and he was able to get us back up and running. So we do apologize here. <laughs> Quite a bit of uh, penalties have ensued since we unfortunately went off the air here. However, the Generals are now looking at a third down and four with a minute to go here in the second quarter as Logan Goings will scamper his way all the way to about the Bruin 40-yard line. 
There was some back and forth penalties. The Generals picked up about seven yards and then it was negated by a holding call. That pushed them back on first down. And then followed by another good run on second down, which was negated by another penalty. And there you saw that Logan going. Then Scamper just short of the first down marker to bring it a fourth down and three. One minute to go here in the second quarter. And the Generals will take a quick timeout. And I will keep it right here as head coach John Beck has got to really kind of decide whether or not do I take a shot at the end zone here? Do I just look at the first down? As that is the last timeout for the general, the general John Beck. As the generals find themselves down three as they got their first touchdown of the game with 4.57 to go in the second. And unfortunately, the PAT was a bit right. A safety in the first quarter as the generals found themselves in the wrong end zone. And also in the first quarter, the Bruins scored just right before the end of the first quarter. So now the Generals looking at a fourth down in three. And I believe, unfortunately, that'll be another penalty. And that was not the ideal situation. And now that will send the punting team out on the field. So after the fourth and three attempt, we'll now unfortunately have to bring out the punt squad. And the clock still continues to show one minute. And certainly penalties have been a, a storyline that I think a lot of people could probably figure out watching this football game. As the Bruins have one timeout remaining. And I wonder what head coach Terry Summerfield is going to do here. And this one will go out of bounds. At the Bruin 25 yard line. With 54 seconds remaining here. I do believe, fans, we will have an extended halftime due to that it is homecoming here at Sam Barlow High School. Sam Barlow High School was opened in the fall of 1968. The Bruins have never found their way to a state championship. They came very close in 1991. They got all the way to the semifinals. They do have an alumni that is a little bit special to the state of Oregon. Former Blazer, former Duck, Frederick Jones. Was a wonderful basketball player to make his way through here. As Jaron almost has this one intercepted, but it is caught. As Josh Nomi was in the right spot, and he picks up about eight yards, and so that clock will continue to run as the ball was just short of the first down marker with 34 seconds to go and I believe that the Bruins will call timeout no I apologize here an official's timeout to now bring in a third down and one so third down and one for the fighting John Becks a big stand here would certainly send a statement heading into the locker room at halftime. As the generals bring two guys to the line. Blitz package. Jaron keeps it himself. And he will be close to the first down marker. And he will get it. And he bounces his way forward all the way to their own 41-yard line. And now the Bruins are saying, we got to go into our NASCAR formation here. we got to get this engine running. As Jaron will send two to the top, two at the bottom. Forced out of the pocket. Zahari, he's there down the field, and this one is caught. Caught by Jackson Kane, who found himself in the back of the end zone for a touchdown in the first quarter. And that will stop the clock as Mr. Kane found himself standing out of bounds so with 16 seconds to go second down in five as the Bruins 
have themselves a slight lead. So nothing would mean more than to the Generals right now if they were able to hold the Bruins to no points before we retire in intermission. Jaron drops back, pressure, steps up in the pocket, man downfield, and this one is incomplete. However, once again, the, the yellow hanky has found its way out on the field a substantial amount here in this football game, and I anticipate that might be a pass interference on the Generals, which would advance that football 15 more yards with 10 seconds remaining here. And that is the call, so... 15 yards from the previous spot will march the Bruins closer to the Generals end zone. So now Terry Summerfield in his 22nd year has got a decision to make. If they have one time out and we know that the young man in the in the backfield, Jaron has got himself quite an arm. Will drop back. Now pressure. Steps up. Ball downfield. And this one is caught. And the Bruins doing a nice job getting out of bounds there. Again, Josh Nomi. That's been that Jaron to Nomi connection that has been a quite effective here in this football game. As the clock shows three seconds. As the Bruins stand on the Generals' 16-yard line. So decision time. Take a shot at the end zone or kick the field goal. It'll be about a 30-31 yard try. And Coach Summerfield's going to say, gentlemen, let's try to get six on the board here. Jaron in the gun. Three at the top, one at the bottom. And he will look to the sideline now to decide what they will do. And they will pause to take a timeout for the, arguably the last play of the first half. We will take a timeout as well. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Brian here for Grant Boosters to help raise money for Grant's High School's many diverse clubs and athletic teams. Grant's clubs and teams keep our kids inspired, active, and connected. The success of Grant's clubs and teams would not be possible without the support of parents, friends, and family like you. Please donate today to continue these wonderful activities. Please go to Grant Gibbs. Nine to six. Three seconds remaining here in the second quarter. And the Bruins have an opportunity to get their second touchdown of the game, but nothing would give more enthusiasm than to the general army than to hold the Bruins here so we'll find out what happens here as Jaron in the gun one at the top he'll send a man in motion Jaron steps up man downfield touchdown Jackson Kane with his second touchdown grab of the game as he found himself in the middle of the zone and the Bruins will get their 15th point at the game as the clock shows zero, and they're a PAT away from making it a 10-point lead. So the Generals had an opportunity to hold them. They were unable to. Jaron finds big tight end, Jackson Kane. And the young lady, Allie Hoffman, will come out on the field to attempt the PAT. And this one is blocked, and that's where we will leave it. So at halftime... As the Bruins score with three seconds to go in the second quarter, the Bruins have themselves a nine-point lead here at Barlow High School and homecoming for the Bruin faithful. We will take a timeout, but when we come back, Mitch will join me. Mitch and I will give our thoughts about the first half, but before we can do that, we have to make sure we recognize all our wonderful sponsors here. You're watching live coverage of Grant Football at halftime, 15-6. Generals down nine. Don't go anywhere. Hi, fans. Brian and Mitch here for Blind Onion Pizza and Pub. 
a neighborhood favorite pizza joint close to Grant, and offering great honest pizza, sandwiches, salads, and their craft beers. The Blind Onion offers a casual, nostalgic, fun atmosphere and has a strong focus on delicious pizza, making it a popular hangout that fits perfectly in the community. Check out the delicious house special pizzas and oven-baked sandwiches. And don't forget about their wonderful appetizers and excellent salads with bargain prices on micro-brews and special pizza creations. The Blind Onion, located at 3345 Northeast Broadway Street, right here in Portland. Eat there after the game or any time. Blind Onion Pizza and Pub. Hi fans, Brian here. As a former athlete who certainly felt the aches and pains of growing up playing football, I appreciate the work that chiropractors do. But look no further than to the Bodai Tree Clinic right here in Northeast Portland. The Bodai Tree Clinic is a whole care clinic dedicated to physical health, recovery, and healing. They specialize in rehabilitation from injuries related to sports, work, auto accidents, personal injuries, as well as treatment for neck and back pain. Dr. Dillon of the Bodai Tree Clinic is Grant's team chiropractor and gives the players time and attention in making sure their bodies are feeling good and moving right. For more information, please visit their website at thebodaitreeclinic.com. Hi fans, Brian and Mitch here for Moon and Sixpence. After every broadcast, Mitch and I are fired up, generally after a huge general victory. But we also find ourselves a little bit hungry. And where do we turn? We turn to Moon and Sixpence as Mike and Mary Marshall are parents of one of our great top senior players and proud owners of the Moon and Sixpence. They generously offer up their establishment every year to help Friends of Grant football fundraise, provide team dinners, and host coaches' meetings. The Grant community is very lucky to have this area favorite that supports the neighborhood, players, and families. Moon and Six Pens is a charming, classic English pub offering cast condition ales with a dart room, beer garden, live music, and my favorite, a great back patio. Moon and Six Pens is located at 2014 Northeast 42nd Avenue. Catch it during the week or catch it after a game. That's Moon Six Pence, a proud sponsor of Grant Football. Hi fans, did you know that one in three people notice somebody's smile right when they meet for the first time? Turn to Parkside Orthodontics if you're not confident in your smile. Dr. Rebecca Cooperstein, a board certified orthodontist in Portland, Oregon, and a neighborhood favorite for braces. Dr. Cooperstein is committed to providing the highest quality orthodontic treatment for all ages in a caring, comfortable environment. Parkside Orthodontics is a state-of-the-art digital office with advanced technology to provide superior results. They also provide a convenient finance option that requires no additional down payment and offers lower monthly payments. If you want to turn that frown upside down, visit Parkside Orthodontics. Hi, Grant General fans. These broadcasts would not be possible without the wonderful support of our great local companies. One company in particular that I want to recognize is Squires Electric Incorporated, which was founded in 1998. Through 20 years of dedication, Squires has provided excellent workmanship, extraordinary service, and have surrounded themselves with the best electricians in the industry. It's one of the company's core values to support the community, and they're proud to be able to enrich the lives of children and help provide the tools needed to succeed. Visit Squires Electric Incorporated, a proud sponsor of Grant Football. Fans, are you in the market for a new home? Maybe you're looking to downsize. Maybe you're looking to increase your square footage. But look no further than to Tammy Going of Windermere Realtors, a parent of one of our wonderful athletes and sponsor that's been serving Northeast Portland for many years. She's an advocate for our students and student athletes and generously gives her time and energy to those in need. Friends of Grant Football is grateful for community members that value the experience of sports and education in the high school process. If you're in the need of a real estate agent, you would be lucky to have Tammy Going represent you through Windermere Realtors.
Friends of Grant Football is a nonprofit organization that exists to build on Grant's strong football tradition, providing long-term viability and to provide the resources required to support the Grant Football community, past, present, and future. Friends of Grant Football would like to thank our 2019 Grant Football corporate and individual supporters and sponsors in the theme of our mission. Friends of Grant Football strives to enrich the lives of players, students, alumni, and administration by providing a program that sustains generation after generation in the pursuit of academic and athletic excellence. Our values are aligned with a tradition that extends beyond many generations of alumni who have passed through the hallways, representing PIL leadership in a challenging and supportive athletic environment. The foundation of the Generals is built on integrity, accountability, inclusion, and a proud competitive spirit. Please visit friendsofgrantfootball.com to join our efforts and participate within our Grant Football community. Brian here for Grant Boosters, who help raise money for Grant's High School's many diverse clubs and athletic teams. Grant's clubs and teams keep our kids inspired, active, and connected. The success of Grant's clubs and teams would not be possible without the support of parents, friends, and family like you. Please donate today to continue these wonderful activities. Please go to Grant Gives. Welcome back to Sam Barlow High School as it were at halftime for homecoming, Mitch. And we had an opportunity to watch some uh, choreographed skits by the freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and senior classes yeah. so the uh, young men and women down there put in some time to entertain in front of their fellow student body i was a little bit uh, uh taken back when they said the graduating class of 2023 but you know what um <laughs> i guess that's part of life that's a circle of life yes yeah. at that point here so mitch let's talk a little bit about the first half okay the game starts off unfortunately with yeah. A safety. Okay. Not, not Nothing too much there. Then still in the first quarter, Barlow comes out, scores. Nine nothing. Kind of right out of, right out of the shoot there. Yeah. Penalties seems to be kind of the Achilles heel thus far. 457 here in the second quarter. The Generals get into the end zone. Right before the half, the Generals have an opportunity to be down only three. Now they find themselves down nine after a great throw and catch from Jaron to who else Jackson Kane the tight end his second touchdown of the game mm -hmm. your thoughts about the first half here besides the ill-advised penalties here it seems as if the generals are on the field a lot on the defensive side and I'm wondering if the conditioning started to get to them a little bit there towards the end but I would love to get your thoughts on what the generals need to do in the second half to put themselves back in this football game. Well, I think you really nailed it on the head there. It's it's a conditioning factor. You have to make sure your guys are, are, are staying focused, and that really includes uh, closing out the halves there. And, 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 and just about any coach will tell you the two most important possessions are the last one of each half. And really that sets the tone for if you're going into the halftime, it sets the tone for your second half. Um, I, I believe that the, the generals are – are receiving the football if i'm if i'm not mistaken no, there. Kick, they are kicking off are they are kicking off okay yeah. so they are kicking off and for the second half here to start things off so it's going to be the defense is going to be right back on the field so you know they are lucky they were able to get in it's a little longer halftime here with the festivities that do take place at during the uh, the homecoming week here for this football game uh it's really a blast from the past to see everything uh uh take place here as far as the the homecoming court and everything and and uh so those guys are getting their rest they're going to get it back out here the defense has got to be uh well rested as you mentioned they have uh spent a much more time on the field probably than what john beck is really looking for uh those guys could be a little gassed here and i hope it doesn't show any signs of that uh late in the third quarter beginning of the fourth quarter all the way through here the second half so that's where we end it, and that's where we find ourselves here at halftime, as as Mitch alluded to, a longer halftime due to the homecoming. But the Generals find themselves down nine. They've been down nine twice in this football game. At one point it was nine nothing. Now they find themselves down 15 
22-6. As we got about two minutes before we wrap up this halftime, the Generals have got to get something going as they got 24 minutes to put some points on to the board. So fans, don't go anywhere. We'll take a timeout, but when we come back, we'll kick off the second half here. You're watching live coverage of Grant Football right here on the Grant Sports Network. Fans, you all know that giving back to your community can be one of the most gratifying things one can feel. But one person in particular is Kenneth Acker, former Grant alum athlete and NFL player for the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Kenneth Acker founded the Ackright Foundation as he brought his generosity to Friends of Grant Football as a gold level sponsor this year as he helps our players with the important equipment they need to be safe and effective. The Ackright Foundation also sponsored the first Grant hosted 7 on 7 tournament this year. Kenneth Acker and the Ackright Foundation has been an incredible example to our players of what can be accomplished through hard work in sports and education. Big thank you to the Ackright Foundation and the generosity of Kenneth Acker, Grant alum. Football players come out. Welcome back to Barlow High School. As the Generals make their way back out onto the field here. And you know, Mitch, I you just always got to trust Coach Weiser. You really do. Coach, yeah. Coach Beck, he just, his ability to rally his troops and to be able to come back out in the second half and say, guys, I understand the scoreboard, we show we're down nine, but we got to go out and play like it's a 0 0 0 football game. And you know as well as anybody that, that Coach John Beck is going to deliver that message well. And I think that this opening possession is a huge possession. You alluded to that, and I think this is a huge, huge possession. And I want to see what these young men do and how they respond coming out here in the second half. You know, we were able to sneak down there and uh, and kind of listen to, to what Coach Beck had to say uh, during the halftime period there. And he, he was, um, I don't want to say uh, yelling, but vocally expressing the urgency here of the first series um, of the second half, and and um, as anybody will tell you that's played the game, you got to start the the second half off on the right foot. You got to. Uh, uh, I always enjoyed running the ball in the first series, coming out at halftime. It kind of sets the tone there. You know, you get your ground and pound game going. You get your guys uh, get the legs kind of turning, get the muscles back, warm back up there, and it kind of eases your quarterback in. They got such a gifted quarterback there uh, with the with Jaron Hunter that uh, they don't really have to worry too much about easing them back into the second half. But I would imagine they're going to run the football uh, quite often here, the Bruins, that is, to start the second half. So as both teams make their way out onto the field and as the fans find their way back to the seats, I'm, I'm extremely impressed, Mitch, that the Bruin faithful, I mean, I was walking up and down the front here when I went to go uh, grab myself a soda and a coffee and... Boy, there's not an open seat here available, and that's just great to see, and great to see the commitment to high school athletics. And this would not be possible to, uh, you know, provide these type of things, especially this broadcast. And so, Mitch and I just want to say thank you to our wonderful sponsors who make these broadcasts possible, and through your hard work and treasure, have allowed these games to be streamed live, and the work of. My man, the engineer, the man behind the brains, the nucleus of the operation, Mitch. I'll tell you what. Gino Zahari. So with that said, we'll take one more time out, but when we come back, we will start the second half as the Generals find themselves down nine. they got 24 minutes to put themselves back in it. You're watching live coverage of Grant Football right here on the Grant Sports Network. Hi, Grant General fans. These broadcasts would not be possible without the wonderful support of our great local companies. One company in particular that I want to recognize is Squires Electric Incorporated, which was founded in 1998. Through 20 years of dedication, Squires has provided excellent workmanship, extraordinary service, and have surrounded themselves with the best electricians in the industry. It's one of the company's core values to support the community, and they're proud to be able to enrich the lives of children and help provide the tools needed to succeed. Visit Squires Electric Incorporated, a proud sp Welcome back, Mitch Bukite, Brian Gregg here, Brody, the young man behind the lens, 
Brody's all bundled up over here. He's ready for basketball season. He's got his Rip City beanie on. And, Mitch, you were telling me that you'll be uh, making your way to the Veterans Memorial Coliseum as the Blazers are doing something special Tuesday night. Oh, I just, I'm just i so excited to be there. It's gonna it's something that, you know, my uh, my wife and I, we always look forward to the, to the new basketball season every year. But more importantly... Uh, we were we were really uh, excited to see they wanted to do kind of a, uh, I, I believe it's the 40. 50. It's the 50, excuse 50. me. I almost said 47 for some well, reason. Well, you're but pretty it was... close to 50, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right next to it. Next year, I'll tell you what. Uh, and uh, we're going to be there for that. It's going to be awesome. They're going to they're gonna kind of um, uh, do a, a throwback evening there, and, and we're going to be at the veteran uh, Memorial Coliseum, as you mentioned, and just excited there Tuesday evening. We're looking forward to getting the, the Rip City Trailblazers back into action. So we will kick this one off to start the second half. What a boot. As the Bruins have got some real Let's estate. Take advantage of it. But Josh Nomi gets tripped up. And Jaron will take command of the offense. At his own 26-yard line. Mitch, you know, we talked about just before our last break there that the generals have got to come out and make a statement. And they got to get the ball back. And nothing would mean more and send a message to your football team that a quick three and out. What you don't want is you don't want the Bruins to go on one of their traditional five, six-minute drives and just milk that clock because you know they're capable of doing they're, that. They're absolutely capable of doing that. I love seeing this. We're coming back out here for three defense right away. And an opportunity. Ball in the turf. And... The general's unable to capitalize as Jaron is right there to fall back on the loose football, and so they will lose about eight yards. And so that's the the type of pressure that you have obviously want to create up front. And so the generals have a good opportunity here. And I wonder at this point, Mitch, with the Bruins being deep in their own territory here, is if the defense is going to dial something up here and pin their ears back and come after them. Well, I wanted them to do that in the first go-around. They ended up playing just coverage defense and dropping back and just only rushing four there as they came down and set up in a 4-3 defense. They got pretty lucky there. It looked like it might have been just a, a bad handle by the quarterback. Uh, and uh, I'm not exactly sure what's the, the holdup here. They may have some, perhaps some blood there uh, or an exposure. That's a very nice way to say it, Mitch. <laughs> an exposure. I like that. 11.20 to go. We're just underway here in the third. As you're watching live coverage of Grant football right here on the Grant Sports Network. And uh, between the penalties, Mitch, there's been a lot of downtime in this football game. It's been a really long football game here thus far. The last three minutes, I think it tallied up to almost 20 minutes in real time. The three minutes to go off the clock there the, in the first half. Inside Reed for the Bruins as Jaron gives it off to his running back again as Josh Nomi, the senior, will scamper his way, get back all the way to close to the initial line of scrimmage. And that'll bring up a third down and 12. So as Mitch was alluding to, the importance of coming out in the second half and making a statement to get that football back. And the Generals are 12 yards Excuse me, the Bruins are 12 yards away from picking up the first down, but Coach John Beck would certainly like to get this football back. And you know, Brian, what the, the importance of coming out quick, you know, and really showing up on the defensive side of the football, what it does is uh, it, it, it allows your guys to get that confidence back there. As everybody's kind of trying to get, get going here, get the second half going, uh, get the wheels turning, the blood pumping, get some oxygen to the brain there, and, uh, and, and showing some confidence in your guys early to start the second half off is always important. And that three and out will be delivered. And so now... After the pressure from that gangbuster of young men out there for the Generals forces Jaron to have to throw the ball downfield, and that one is incomplete. And so now the Bruins will be forced to punt in their own territory as 10-23 shows on the clock here in the third as she stands at his 50-yard line. So the freshman getting a lot of playing time early in his high school career, and I anticipate that we will say that name a lot for the years to come. And he'd certainly like to get his name on the map by giving the general some good field oh. position. 
as the Generals almost get to that one. And the ball will be marked down at about the 50-yard line, and that's where Logan going will take over. We'll take a quick timeout. The Generals will take over from their own 50. Don't go anywhere. Hi, fans. Brian and Mitch here for Moon and Sixpence. After every broadcast, Mitch and I are fired up, generally after a huge general victory. But we also find ourselves a little bit hungry. And where do we turn? We turn to Moon and Sixpence as Mike and Mary Marshall are parents of one of our great top senior players and proud owners of the Moon and Sixpence. Close. Mitch wanted a three and out. Brody wanted a three and out. Gino wanted a three and out. But more importantly, the Generals wanted a three and out. And they got it there. And the Generals will take over at midfield. As Goings will give it off to Mitch's main man, Jay Sean Pete, But he will be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. And the word that I have continued to say a lot on this broadcast, unfortunately, is penalty flag. And I don't know about you, but I certainly enjoy the word. It starts with the T, touchdown, more than I enjoy the P word, penalty. Yeah, I'll tell you what. These uh, referees, uh, they're going to have calloused hands here by the end of this football game. You know, and it, it, it's one of those, as you allude to, it's we're going on two hours of this football game. We just got the second half started here. So um, I hope, uh, hope everybody's okay with going past curfew here tonight because it's going to be a late ball game, I have a feeling. Well, Mitch, I mean, you're what class of – 1934 is past your bedtime. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. You know, I, I, I ate my oatmeal and got my soft <laughs> fruits down and got my Friday pills, and here we go. Mitch was showing off his leather helmet that he played with. <laughs> so the Generals, unfortunately, will have that play negated, and so that will now bring a first down in, an, in about uh, 13, rather a second down in 13, has going will send Luke in motion. Oh, man. And again. Another penalty for the Generals. You got to keep your composure out there. It looks like it might be getting a little chippy down there. So you got to keep your composure. Don't put yourself or your team in a bad situation. Nothing drives Coach Visor anymore irritated than when he gets those ill-advised penalties so second down 17 954 to go as Logan drops back plenty of time rolls out looking now he's got to hold it reverses course back to the far side still looking and he will get back to the initial line of scrimmage and dive forward all the way to the 47 yard line so Great protection there by the big fellas up front, but in essence, a bit of a coverage sack there, Mitch. Yeah, nobody open at all. He, You know, Logan dropped it down. He was going to run it. We ever, Everybody here knew he was going to run the football once he saw that nobody was uh, available uh, in the receiving corp. And so uh, he really, uh, unfortunately, we got a missed block there by, uh, by Max Von Arks. Uh, Could have picked up a big-time game there, but uh, missed the block, unfortunately, and we'll have to try to get it back here. Double tight. Jay Sean next to him. Logan downfield. Wow. And this ball is caught. Caught on the far side by Mitch's main man. Here's your main man, Luke McCullough, who last week had five <laughs> catches for 198 yards. And Luke all of a sudden coming up with the big catch to move the chains. He's got a little bounce in his step here. I've just kind of been watching him just on this series. And he's got a little bounce in his step. I wonder if uh, Coach maybe gave him a little bit of a, you know, a little nod of the head there saying we're going to go your way a little bit more on the offensive side of the football starting off with the second half as he's gotten two pass attempts, two targets. And, man, was that a next-level throw there by Luke uh, – or, excuse me, by Goings or what? Man, that was a big-time throw. Jay Sean will get the handoff from Logan, and he will – Fall forward all the way to the 42-yard line as Coach Beck coming out in the second half utilizing a two tight end set. And uh, certainly I would I would anticipate that a Peter Zahari play might be here in store here, especially with that young man's athleticism that I know that Peter Zahari's father was quite the athlete himself and nothing would mean more to this this football team than to move this football down the field. Special athlete right there going rolls out looking still looking that's a smart play and he falls down back to the 
original line of scrimmage, and so that'll... And, you know, a lot of people will, will, will scoff at that play, and they'll say, what is he doing? He's not picking, you know, he's not even looking down the field to make the throw. He's not looking to pick up many yards, but what he's doing is he's putting himself in the position here to succeed on the next play. You'll see uh, folks that, like Tom Brady uh, make those plays. Well, they'll just get to the next play. Peyton Manning, those guys get to the next play. Don't hurt yourself any more than you have to. Clock continues to trickle as the Bruin faithful come to their feet as they have their team on top by nine. Big possession here for the Generals. Going, drops back, looking downfield. has got a man. And this one is incomplete as he was looking for his receiver all the way down the field. And I... Didn't get a chance to see who that one was there. Was, excuse me, Luke Borchart was the intended receiver. Brian, I'd be curious to kind of get your perspective on the play call there. I know it's third and long, but we've seen that twice here. We've seen a fourth and eight with the same similar play call in a, in a third and ten as we just witnessed there uh, in a um, almost like a, a, a punt opportunity, a Hail Mary punt Um just, uh, I would love to get your perspective on that last play call. Yeah, I certainly identify more as a two-down territory here. It's fourth down and ten, showing punt. As this time it'll be Ethan McLaughlin will be the young man to gunsling this one. As he was looking for his receiver, he was looking for Jay Sean there, but was unable to come up with it on fourth down. And so that will change of possession. So the Generals had a big opportunity to put points on the board, but unfortunately they were unable to as the Bruins hold, and they will take over on their own 38-yard line. And uh, let me let me give you a, a, a piece of advice here if you're playing football. Oh, I'm ready, Mitch. I'm ready for my piece of advice. <laughs> if you're going to run a fake punt, don't let it take 30 seconds to develop. It's got to be quick. If it's not, then just do a rugby-style punt and kick it down the field. Low snap handled by Jaron. Give it off to his shifty back, Jack Fay. And Jake Fay will fall forward all the way to the 44-yard line. And that clock continues to move, not in the favor, unfortunately, of the Generals. There's certainly a, a, a certain time of the ball game uh, that's going to be an offensive penalty, I believe, here, Brian. I believe that the line judge is, in, is signaling that it was a movement by the Generals, and so... This is a a bit of a. Well, I thought I saw forty seven move in the backfield there, but looks like they uh, either missed that or I was uh, miss miss misread something there. And it will be a offsides penalty on the generals, and it certainly looks like a reminder a lot of the West Salem contests, a lot of penalties, a lot of poor play when it comes to the discipline of the generals here. Stop a lot of stop and play action, and, and what it really would do is it'll kill your momentum as a football team altogether on the defensive side of the ball and along with the offensive side of the ball. Here, let's see if we can get a hold call, and he is going to get a hold call. Two of them swing pass to Durham Sunberg, and he scampers his way all the way down to the 35 yard line as the laundry makes its way back onto the field. And that's been the continuous statement for months of the game is the number of penalty flags that have found its way on the artificial surface. Well, we got the uh, the guilty party with his palms in the air, like he's unsure of what was going on, but it was a tackle. I'm not sure which lineman doesn't understand that's a hold, um, but maybe he was uh, thinking that he had the guy in a legal um, position there, but I don't know. I could see it pretty, pretty su- substantially up here, and not one but two different officials were able to throw their penalty flags on that particular play. So that will negate the play, and so the Bruins will have to push this one back all the way to their 39-yard line. As that clock continues to run, and, you know, Mitch, you start to wonder that the number of possessions that the Generals will have on offense, and certainly a, a big defensive series here for the Generals. As the Generals show 4 3, Jaron rolls out. And he will keep it himself, and he will be taken down after a pickup of about three, still short of the first down marker. And so that will now 
brings second down and 13. Yeah, and Jamison Price there, unfortunately, came out of the strong safety position and just didn't make the tackle. He ended up just barely missing and was able to force him back inside, in which uh, was able to create the tackle um, on the defensive side of the ball. I wasn't sure who made the tackle itself, but great play there by Jamison Price to force the, the ball carrier back into the middle of the field, which is very important. Clock is certainly in the favor of the Bruins. They got a numbers advantage here. Yep, there you go. Okay, looks like Dee figured it out. Two at the top, three at the bottom. Jared's going to keep it himself, keep the loaf of bread under the arm, and he will scamper and fall forward and get all the way to center field. And so that will now bring up a third down in about six. So, Mitch, I think it's safe to say that this third down possession here is an imperative third down here for the generals if they want to put themselves back into this one well i just dare them i dare you guys to do this play without getting a flag let the clock run here they need to let that clock run as much as possible there on the bruins they do need to uh, keep in bounds if they are running towards the sideline to make sure they fall in bounds keep that clock ticking empty set five wide jaron drops back pump fates looking has time still time now forced out Zahari is there, and Zahari comes up and sticks his nose right there into the face mask. And so a good defensive stand there by the Generals. And so now the Bruins will most likely have to bring out the punting unit. Or does head coach Terry Summerfield have something up his sleeve to say, let's let's go for it here. And I have yet to see the punting squad come out here, Mitch. Peter Zahari with an excellent play there. It's actually probably could be the biggest play of the ball game thus far, to be honest with you. There's been a couple scores, I know, but uh, in this instance there, the way he was able to get to the sideline, make sure that the quarterback did not advance to the first down yardage, uh, it was just imperative that he make that tackle, and he did. Fourth down and six. Big fourth down for the Generals. Has Jaron with pressure, and he is brought <laughs> down in the backfield. As Max Von Arks coming up from his outside linebacker position takes down Jared Hunter. And the Generals now have excellent field position as head coach Terry Summerfield decides to go for it on fourth down. And so head coach John Beck has his team with great field position. And I think that is a play that we'll have to remember as Max comes up huge. Well, Max, I think he he uh, wanted a little payback. He missed a, a tackle for loss earlier in the ball game, and and right before the 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 second half there, he actually missed a pretty big tackle that would have uh, uh, negated an actual touchdown there uh, f- for the Bruins. But more more importantly, he was able to. Uh, to get outside and get up the field as we t- spoke about before there. Instead of moving laterally, he got up the field, made that tackle. Huge tackle for a loss. As Logan going, will keep this one himself. Uh, Jaron Hunter, he's just he's got to be smarter with the ball. You can't you can't drop back that far on fourth down. I know you're trying to to make a play for your team, but you got to recognize there that you just can't do that. You can't allow yourself to make that that mental error. Credit the secondary of the generals to force him out of the pocket. But big play there by Max as he came up from his outside linebacker position. As after the play, a personal foul penalty is called against the Bruins, so that will march the generals closer to the so important six-point part of the football field, Mitch. You know, that was their second personal foul penalty of this ball game, so they got to make sure they're keeping their uh, keeping their composure. There's no more personal fouls here. That's uh, something you don't want to see at this level of football. Logan going 23 yards from putting six points on the scoreboard as he sends three to the bottom. Single tight end at the top, swing pass, right-hand side, caught by McCullough. McCullough down to the 15, turns the corner, and finally pushed out of bounds. At the 16-yard line. So the Generals knocking on the door here. And if there is a time that you need to put points on the board, Mitch, that time is now. Well, it was a a great little uh, chipper out there. I believe it was uh, Quinn Gerald that had a nice little chip block on 
on the strong safety on that side there, the short side of the field, and was able to make a, a great block and, and have Luke hit the corner there and, and pick up uh, some positive yardage. As going, speed option near side. And falls forward, gets down to the 8-yard line as the clock continues to trickle down to 320 to bring up a second down and 7. I love that play call there, Brian. And it, what it does is it sets themselves up so they can it's, they have more opportunities here, more uh, uh, different formats that they can come out on the offensive side of the ball and, and line up in different formations and give themselves better looks here as they got the big back 34 in the ball game here. Perhaps they might just do a little read option here. I'm unsure of uh, uh, what they got. They got even numbers on the defense, so we'll see. Zahari in motion, and he will give it to the big fella. This is Sheesh, and he doesn't gather much real estate, and the ball comes loose, but the officials signal that he was down prior to the Bruins ripping the football out of the hands. And we have a official's timeout, and we will take the timeout with them. General's knocking on the door. Don't go anywhere. Live coverage, Grand Football, right here on the Grand Sports Network. Hi, fans. Brian and Mitch here for Blind Onion Pizza and Pub, a neighborhood favorite pizza joint close to Grant and offering great, honest pizza, sandwiches, salads, and their craft beers. The Blind Onion offers a casual, nostalgic, fun atmosphere and has a strong focus on delicious pizza, making it a popular hangout that fits perfectly in the community. Check out the delicious house special pizzas and oven-baked sandwiches, and don't forget about their wonderful appetizers and excellent salads with bargain prices on micro-brews and special pizza creations. The Blind Onion, located at 3345 Northeast Broadway Street, right here in Portland. Either after the game or any time. Blind Onion Pizza. <laughs> Welcome back. The Generals knocking on the door here. Coach Beck doesn't want three. He wants six and add one to make that seven. As is there looking at another third down and nine yards to go. Well, I'd really like to see them utilize the far side of the field here so they can make sure they get themselves in the position to score and not hit the fourth down. Going, drops back, looking, crossing around in the end zone! Touchdown, Generals! Peter Zahari coming across the field there, and he gets in the end zone. Touchdown, Generals. God, he's just got some quick feet, man. He really gets that ball. He gets those feet chopping. He gets up the field. Is able to put the ball in the end zone and score. Here for the Grant Generals. Nice job there by Peter Zahari. And unfortunately, and unfortunately there we... I'm having a hard time following the flag somehow here this evening. I, I've seen so many of them. Maybe I'm just uh, used to it here by now. Oh, Mitch, unfortunately, there's going to be a another penalty flag after the Sahari touchdown on the drag play. That's a 15-yard penalty. I missed the pass interference on the offense. Oh, okay. So now a third down and 24. So going, two to the top. Rolls out, it's got pressure. Looking, looking. And this one is incomplete. Looking again for Mr. Zahari, but just off the fingertips of the young man. And that'll bring up a very, very important fourth down. And a decision time for the generals here. And head coach John Beck wasted no time, and he's going to send out his kicker, Marco, for what I would say is probably his biggest field goal attempt of the year, as this will be a 37-yard attempt. A lot of confidence here. A field goal here would put the generals... He's got the leg here, Brian, and he's just got to be able to put it through the uprights. We watched him pregame, and he was very successful from this distance. Coach Beck putting it in the hands of Mr. Vlasky. Good snap, good hold, kick is up. It's long enough, 
And it is no good, just off to the right. And so, unfortunately, after a negated touchdown there, after Zahari was in the end zone, a penalty removed the points from the board. And Vlasco, attempting a 37-yard field goal, was unable to capitalize. So the Generals had their opportunities, unfortunately, just unable to add points to the scoreboard. Yeah, got to be real disappointed with the outcome there. That last drive is uh, kind of get teased with that touchdown, and and it uh, that carpet pulled out from underneath you there, and just a just a, a real punch to the gut. So Coach Beck wants to talk to his young men, and we will take the break with them. Two oh three to go. Bruins on top, fifteen six. Don't go anywhere. Hi fans, Brian here. As a former athlete who certainly felt the aches and pains of growing up playing football, I appreciate the work that chiropractors do. But look no further than to the Bodie Tree Clinic right here in Northeast Portland. The Bodie Tree Clinic is a whole care clinic dedicated to physical health, recovery, and healing. They specialize in rehabilitation from injuries related to sports, work, auto accidents, personal injuries, as well as treatment for neck and back pain. Dr. Dillon of the Bodie Tree Clinic is Grant's team chiropractor and gives the players time and attention in making sure their bodies are feeling good and moving right. For more information, please visit their website at thebodietreeclinic.com. Welcome back to Sam Barlow High School. Bruins have themselves a nine-point lead, Mitch, and you just you just feel you just got that sickening feeling in your stomach <laughs> after Gosh. Peter crossed the goal line, but there was that bright colored rag that fell out of the pocket, and unfortunately, it wasn't a mistake; it was a pass interference call, and so that took points off the board and unable to capitalize on their field goal opportunity. Second down and four as Jaron will give it off to. His speedster in the backfield. And the young man, Jake Fay, will pick up another first down for the Bruins as that clock continues to move, Mitch, and those chains continue to move as well. The Generals have got to get a stop here. Yeah, Bruins doing an excellent job keeping the ball in between the uh, the out-of-bounds here and keeping that clock ticking away. Hand off again to Jake Fay, the 5'9 sophomore. Continuing to drive those feet forward as we hit the one-minute mark here in the third. And it looks like Grant there is uh, they're going to come by and they're going to be uh, trying to strip that football. As you can see, two different individuals trying to get that football back. I wonder if uh, Coach Beiser had a little, a little uh, side talk with those guys about trying to get that football loose and get another turnover. Jared Hunter, 6'3", senior. In the run pass option, gives it off to Jake Fay once again. And as Mitch alluded to and noticed that the Generals are trying to strip that ball away. I wonder if they're going to snap this football here before we get into the fourth quarter. Looks like that is their intention, is to get one more playoff here before we switch to the fourth and final quarter. And, you know, one thing they've done a, a great job. Now it looks like they are going to go ahead and, and concede the quarter here. But one thing that they have done a great job here of, of doing is making sure they do get little chunks of, of yardage here. They're not necessarily falling down at the line of scrimmage, but getting positive yardage. The Bruins, that is. So at the end of three, the Generals have got 12 minutes to put themselves back in this football game. You're watching live coverage of Grant football right here on the Grant Sports Network. I think I've always known he was going to do something like this. He did not want to do active duty because he wants to do college first. I think that was the biggest thing for him, instead of waiting and then doing college after. One of the differences I noticed when he came back from basic training, he was more organized in how he was going about things a little bit. I know he commented that a lot of things his classmates would do that he didn't bother him before, but now he realizes, you know, because he's been outside of high school, I think maybe he's a little more responsible. He's thinking about his future a lot more. He talks about it and uh, the different possibilities. 
and he mentioned the ROTC program as well and he said you know I could graduate as an officer and so I was kind of excited when he mentioned that he could do that as well. I would just tell people you know if their son or daughter was considering the National Guard that I think it's a great opportunity. I think it's something that can really... Three gone, one, one to go. Generals find themselves down nine. Coach Beck has got to draw something up to put themselves back in it. On a third down and two, the Bruins capitalize as Jaron finds his open man down the field. And that pass is complete to Durham Sundberg. So again, another third down. And the Bruins capitalize, and that'll be another first down for the young man in blue and yellow. Yeah, we haven't said his name here in a while. I've been watching him. He's been running routes. Um, I'm, I, I'm not exactly sure if he's got maybe perhaps a, um, a little tweak of an ankle there, but he hasn't been running routes at 100%. I'm, I'm wondering if he maybe has a little bit of a, a minor injury, but able to make a big catch there, uh, uh, Durham Sun, Sunberg. Double tight, give the read, left-hand side. This will be Josh Nomi again. And so certainly, Mitch, the clock is not in the favor of the Generals. And we will take a 30-second time out. Bruins on top, 15-6. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. I think I've always known he was going to do something like this. He did not want to do active duty because he wants to do college first. I think that was the biggest thing for him, instead of waiting and then doing college after. One of the differences I noticed when he came back from basic training, he was more organized in how he was going about things a little bit. I know he commented that a lot of things his classmates would do that he didn't bother him before, but now he realizes, you know, because he's been outside of high school, I think maybe he's a little more responsible. He's thinking about his future a lot more. He... Eleven thirty to go here in the fourth. You're watching live coverage and powered by Table Rock Sports. As Jaron will fake the handoff, keep it himself, gets into open state, available real estate, and he will pick up a first down. However, there is a penalty flag on the field, and we'll check the penalty there, but. Boy, sure had me fooled on that one. Jaron looked as though that he was going to give it to Josh Nomi, but he did not and kept it himself. And the early indication is that that penalty flag again, Mitch, will fall on the shoulders of the young men with the blue sh with the blue shells. And I'll tell you what, if we had five cents for every time we said uh, a penalty flag, you'd be walking out of here with a few bucks, man. It's been it's been some slow going here. So an, so an automatic first down. Automatic first down. So that'll push the football all the way in inside of the 10-yard line. So the Generals got to dig deep here. Got to make a stop here. It's a big part of the football game here. Got to be able to make sure that they can get down in inside the – do not let him score. Double tight. Golly. And again, another penalty flag makes its way out after the nice defensive play there by Luke. And Mr. McCullough coming up from his free safety position has an additional flag. And it is an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty committed against the general. So that will be half the distance to the goal. And boy, those are certainly penalties that you cannot cannot have, especially when you find yourself in a crunch time situation and the Bruins knocking on the door once again. Well, I didn't see much down there. Maybe it must have been something verbal. I didn't see uh, too, mi too much of an altercation or anything there. I wonder if there was maybe uh, some words spoke back and forth there. Not too kind here on homecoming night. Or as I like to say, a lively discussion. <laughs> yes, very colorful. 15-6 to six here 
Bruins are four yards away from making it 21, possibly even 22 points. As the officiating crew will make his way over to head coach John Beck to have a conference here. So, you know, Mitch, we've talked about the penalties here. I, you just you just got to be disciplined. I just you just can't say it any other way. I hate I, I hate to be I hate to be so callous or, or or negative, but you just you just can't commit those type of errors. And when you have that many penalties, it's extremely difficult to win football games. You know, it's uh, it's unfortunate because you really you're two scores away from from leading this football game at least leading anyways. You may be on top uh, or leading or at least tied. Excuse me. But uh, you're, you're just not allowing yourself to put yourself in that position. It's unfortunate. Under center, gives it off to his back, and he's into the end zone as Josh Nomi gets the third touchdown of the game for the Bruins, and they put 21 points on the board. So after the unsportsmanlike penalty, the Bruins wasted no time in adding to their point total, and they're at PAT away from making it 22 points with 10.57 to go here in the fourth period as the uh, Bruins of the Mount Hood Conference playing some good football right now. Boy, are they showing how special of a football team they are here this evening? Well, the kick is good by Abby Hoffman and 22 points shows on the board. So the General's in a bit of a hole, got to score here. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. You're watching live coverage of Grand Football right here on the Grand Sports Network. Fans, are you in the market for a new home? Maybe you're looking to downsize. Maybe you're looking to increase your square footage. But look no further than to Tammy Going of Windermere Realtors, a parent of one of our wonderful athletes and sponsor that's been serving Northeast Portland for many years. She's an advocate for our students and student athletes and generously gives her time and energy to those in need. Friends of Grant Football is grateful for community members that value the experience of sports and education in the high school process. If you're in the need of a real estate agent, you would be lucky to have Tammy Going represent you through Windermere Real Estate. 22-6 in favor of the young men in blue and yellow as the Bruin faithful on homecoming night are pretty pleased football team right now and they have all the right to be as the generals have shot themselves a bit into the foot and they got to get something going here as Jamison Price a name we have not said too many times tonight will receive this kick here and he will be brought down at the 30 yard line and that's where Logan going will command the offense you know, an excellent kick there by uh, someone that you pointed out a little earlier to me, a, a, a special individual, Abby Hoffman, was able to, uh, she's been doing the kicking duties here for the Barlow Bruins um, all day. She's done an excellent job. Really got a, a big leg, man. That thing gets booted down the field. So Logan has got to get something going here. Got to move that football. Certainly this possession is the one that you got to do it on as he will send Luke in motion. Give it off to his speedster, left-hand side, Jay Sean, and he scampers his way all the way down to the 43-yard line, and he's slow to get up. It like Terry's keeping uh, – excuse me, Terry Summerfield's going to keep his starters in here. It looks like he's got most of his starting crew on the defensive side of the ball here uh, still playing. So timeout on the field, and we will join him. Can the generals get something going here? We'll find out. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Sam Barlow High School as the rain has subsided and the chill factor has, <laughs> the temperature has dropped a bit, Mitch. Yeah, I had to put on my jacket here as we're outside enjoying this uh, this weather of ours here in Oregon. 
Three at the top. Swing pass. Luke trying to get something. Breaks one tackle. Sidesteps another and falls forward all the way to the 47-yard line. And that clock will continue to trickle down. And so the generals really can't afford to be lackadaisical by any means. They need to continue to push the tempo. And if they want to put themselves in a position to get back into this football game is Logan continues to command that offense and this time he'll send three to the top one to the bottom shows fake looking back with time down the field and he's got it got it to Peter Peter to the 10 to the 5 and he will get into the end zone for a touchdown that's Peter (laughs) Zahari from his tight end position Gets into the end zone, scanning the field, and there's no yellow laundry and touchdown generals. Woo, it was meant to be. Peter with the uh, with the penalized touchdown earlier in the game there, just to, I believe it was right at the end of the third quarter, and uh, was able to get some payback on that one. Man, what a catch and run. Boy, there was a time to sure get a touchdown. It was on that series there. And, and during the coach's corner there, in the at your beck and call coach's corner, he talked about that we're going to get Peter Zahari involved in the offense and he certainly has here, as they're a PAT away from making it a nine-point football game. Logan good. Goins with an absolute drop of a dime. Good snap, good hold, kick is up. It looks good, and it is good. So 13 points show on the board after the Peter Zahari touchdown catch, and he gets into the end zone. We'll take a timeout when we come back. The Generals got to force a three and out. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Hi, Grand General fans. These broadcasts would not be possible without the wonderful support of our great local companies. One company in particular that I want to recognize is Squires Electric Incorporated, which was founded in 1998. Through 20 years of dedication, Squires has provided excellent workmanship, extraordinary service, and have surrounded themselves with the best electricians in the industry. It's one of the company's core values to support the community, and they're proud to be able to enrich the lives of children and help provide the tools needed to succeed. Visit Squires Electric Incorporated, a proud... We have a 50-50 winner. Well, as they say in the Brady Bunch, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. This time it's Peter, Peter, Peter. Oh, man. And Peter gets across the goal line, and that's a name that we have not said that often this season, but Coach Beck talked about getting... Peter Zahari involved in the offense, and he has scored his first touchdown of this game. And after the excellent kickoff, the Bruins are now Coughlin with a McClock in there. Jeez, that was a rowdy hit. So nine-point game. And if, and if there's a oh, so go ahead, man. Oh, I was just gonna say, how about John Beck, Coach John Beck, calling his shots there with uh, utilizing Peter Zahari, just like he told us he would there pregame. Peter Zahari's got to be one tired dude out there. It's not only does he do it on the offensive side of the ball, but also at the end position. As Jaron drops back, a lot of time, a lot of time. Now has pressure, looking, still looking. Eludes one tackler and picks up about three yards. And so that'll bring up a second down and seven. So good coverage there by the generals. And you got to credit the young men in the secondary. Uh, I'm going to credit the secondary there. I can tell the big guys up front there for uh, for the generals. They're getting tired. Uh, you, you, there was almost no pressure there. I saw two guys kind of stand straight up there and get a get a little gasp of air so i think they're getting a little gassed on the defensive side of the ball and which is to be expected they spent about half the half the game out there got to dig deep inside run again to jake fay and that young man is shifty and down in the trenches and he picks up another first down and boy when he certainly thought that the generals could take advantage of a huge opportunity unfortunately they were unable to and that will move those big tall orange sticks over there Mitch and that means generally a first down I think he might be sprayed down with some I can't believe it's not butter or something here he's so slick he gets through the line no one he, he, he's, an arm tackle is not going to get anywhere close to bringing him down to the turf I don't understand they got to tackle him low but and this time Jaron will keep it himself 
And he will sidestep and make his way all the way to the 40-yard line. As Jackson Monfort coming up from his linebacker position to make that play. And can you believe it? We went back-to-back -back plays with no penalty flags. I didn't want to say it, but it seemed at this point I scanned the field every time. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, they got to get got to get the get in the, in the in the film room there and make sure that they're breaking down that stuff there so they can correct that for next week it seems like every other week we're facing a lot of penalties uh got to make sure you're staying mentally focused throughout the game yes jaron will give it off to jake fay and that'll be another first down well, another good stick there on the defense there. Great tackle. It's just unfortunate that it came after a 14-yard gain. He was out there uh, about 14 yards before anybody decided they wanted to play some football and uh, make a tackle there. But unfortunately, 14 yards before that for, for uh, excuse me before that tackle could be made there for uh, the Grant Generals. It's a big word, Mitch. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> words. Big ones. Use them together. <laughs> Put words together, they make sentences. 6.56 <laughs> to go here, 22-13. As that clock continues to move its way southbound. And they will give it off to the young man in the backfield. Max there with another tackle. Had a really good game there. Just one error, really. Just uh, was was unable to make a tackle earlier in the game. I, for some reason, keep bringing that up. I know he's probably going to be real super pleased about that, him and his folks. But he uh, uh, does a really good job there on the defensive side. He's just a can, he understands what play is coming there. I don't know if he's just watching the guards running a, a, a run or a pass option. But he's just uh, had an excellent game there reading the offense there on the defensive side. And double tied again. And Jaron will send a man in motion. Give it off to his back again. This is Fay, And he breaks one tackle, moves those legs forward. And penalty flags fly, Mitch. And so we'll check the penalty there. You see how square he keeps his shoulders when he runs? I tell you what, he, he does an excellent job. Even if he's moving from side to side, his, his shoulders are square. And that's how you're going to be an effective ball carrier. So we'll check the flag. And the initial indication that is a holding penalty, so that will push back the Bruins of blue and yellow. As the holding calls are, as always, a spot foul call, so that will bring up a second down and and 13 so after Jake Fay the freshman excuse me the sophomore getting some good run there for the young man as Jaron will signal to his team an empty backfield got to anticipate a keeper here as the general show blitz and it is Jaron will keep himself ball on the turf and, oh, boy, the Generals had their opportunity there but could not retrieve that football. Excuse my sigh there. I, I Just an, uh, one of those opportunities that falls right in your lap and you try to scoop and, and, and keep running instead of just falling down on the football. And uh, Probably wish you could have had that one back, darn it. Football found its way onto the turf. Generals had their opportunities, but... The Bruins were there to pounce back on it. But in any event, third down 13 on their own 46-yard line. As the Bruins would certainly like to put that football back onto that turf here. If there was a time to cause a turnover, it would be at this moment here. As Jaron, pump fake, looking, pressure, got to get rid of it. He's there. General's still there. Now he reverses course. Backyard football. A lot of... A lot of time, now gets to the midfield, breaks one tackle, and gets all the way near the first down marker. And it will be another first down for the Bruins. As the Generals had their opportunity, but could just not bring down that young man. 
That yeah. was a loud snap I heard, I think. there That might have broke the back of the generals. That's something like that, you know, with the, such a, a backyard-style football, as you mentioned there, and scrambling around, keeping his eyes down the field. That's a special play to be able to do that, to keep your composure and, and to be able to stay uh, uh, focused throughout the play and keep your eyes down the field, knowing which guys, where they're going to be at, and that's going to be where the senior, uh, the, the seniority really takes over there as an upperclassman. Double tight, Bruins in the pistol formation. As he'll give it off to his senior. As, that's Josh Nomi again. And he will pick up another first down for the Bruins. And barring anything substantial, I would certainly have to anticipate that that might be the final nail in the coffin for the Generals as they continue to see that clock wind down. They still continue to give a good effort, but... I wouldn't leave just yet. We've seen four fumbles. Uh, not a lot of turnovers on those fumbles, but that ball's hit the ground here four times there this evening. Well, if there's a time for a loose ball, it'd be right now. High snap taken by Jared inside to Jake Fay, and he scampers his all the way, all the way down to the 20-yard line. Ah, he really impresses me with the way he stays square to the football there and, and just is always running towards that line of scrimmage. Special player. Only a sophomore, 5'9", sophomore, 180 pounds there. He's going to have a bright future ahead of him. Fans, don't, don't go anywhere. We're going to provide a post-game show, and then next Friday night, Mitch and I will be here on the call as well as the general's We'll take on the Jefferson Democrats who are playing some excellent football right now in a showdown of two top teams in the PIL pregame show, 6.30. We kick that one off at 7 o'clock, and that'll be a good one over there in Jefferson, Mitch. And I am really <laughs> excited um, about that one there because Jefferson has the number two running back in the country right now, and yeah. your Beavers oh, yeah. apparently are the team right now oh, that has yeah. their eye on him, and nothing would... Uh, make you more happy than to uh, get the number two all-purpose back in, well, you know, in uh, some orange and black. Well, I'm going to be, you know, I might chit-chat with little Johnny Smith here this week and see what he's got, you know, uh, see if I can give him some information, you know, report back to him, if you will. Uh, see, see what we can do there. It's going to be an excellent game. I'm really, really excited for that one. It's just going to be some big-time football being played as we hit that midway point through the season, as you mentioned earlier. As, you know, this is going to be the back half of the, of the season. These guys have really got to focus up, shape up, and start playing some, some more uh, um, uh, disciplined football, if you will. There, It's just too many penalties tonight. We saw what, the, what we saw last week there against a team that they you know, willingly handled and they probably should have, and they did. Uh, the week before, we saw way too many penalties, almost 20 penalties. So they gotta, they got to focus up here. It's midway through the season. No more excuses. 219 to remain here in the fourth quarter. As the pep band has got their team fired up, and they have all the reason to be that, unfortunately, it's really been all Bruins most of this football game. As Jaron will roll out with pressure, now steps up, keeps it himself, sidesteps one man, and picks up about three yards. And again, a penalty flag, <laughs> Mitch, will fly. And late, very, very late, so I wonder if that might be another uh, unsportsmanlike. As we'll wait for the call here. They're kind of placed. Yeah, and it was. It was unsportsmanlike on the general, so that'll march it 15 more yards towards the wrong end zone. Yeah, you just can't can't uh, beat your team up like that there. I, I know, be John, I can see his body language from here. He's not very thrilled about that call. It's being selfish out there on the football field, unfortunately. It might be, uh, might be some gassers there waiting for you on Monday. Make sure you eat a light lunch come Monday. 157 <laughs> to go. 
You don't want to see it twice. Jaron drops back, bootleg, got a man, touchdown. This time it's Andrew Collins for the fourth touchdown of the game for the Bruins to make it 28, and they're a PAT away from making it 29 points. So after the four consecutive first downs picked up by the Bruins, topped off and capitalized with a touchdown from Jaron. And yeah. Jaron has had himself quite the football game, and he's a pretty darn good football player, and that young man's got a bright future heading down to Corvallis. High uh, snap. I don't. Yeah. And the Generals will pounce on that one. But the damage has been done with 147 to go. 28-13. We'll take a timeout. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Hi, fans. Brian and Mitch here from Moon and Six Pence. After every broadcast, Mitch and I are fired up, generally after a huge general victory. But we also find ourselves a little bit hungry. And where do we turn? We turn to Moon and Six Pence as Mike and Mary Marshall are parents of one of our great top senior players and proud owners of the Moon and Six Pence. They generously offer up their establishment every year to help Franz and Grant football fundraise, provide team dinners, and host coaches' meetings. The Grant community is very lucky to have this area favorite that supports the neighborhood, players, and families. Moon and Six Pens is a charming, classic English pub offering cast-conditioned ales with a dart room, beer garden, live music, and my favorite, a great back patio. Moon and Six Pens is located at 2014 Northeast 42nd Avenue. Catch it during the week or catch it after a game. That's Moon Six Pence, a proud sponsor of Grant Football. Welcome back to Barlow High School. <laughs> There's even a flag on the kickoff. What's the old saying? That's par for the course, Mitch. <laughs> I, think, I think we've hit par a few times here. I definitely didn't hit par last Saturday, I can tell you that. Although but, I will say I lost the front nine but won the back nine. So, you know, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And it tallied up to 113 on the scorecard. So <laughs> the Bruins will kick this one back off again. Notice how I didn't say my score. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> So the Bruins will kick this one off. It'll fall into the hands of Jamison, and he will fall forward all the way to the 30-yard line. Speedy Dee down there with that one. Excuse me. Thank you, Mitch. Speedy Dee You know, we haven't seen uh, a lot of him this evening. We did see him get banged up a little earlier, though. I think that's uh, affecting him uh, pretty substantially out there. His speedy Dee has kind of uh, been kind of tamed here this evening. So fans... We had talked about the game next Friday night as the demos will welcome in the generals and Jefferson taking care of business tonight on top of Gresham 62 to 13. So that's a bad day there for Gresham. That's fake, a fake inside read going got his man Zahari. And he's caught and takes it all the way down to the Bruin 40-yard line. And, boy, we have seen that play a couple times in this game here. Boy, his athleticism to get that ball and get into open space is absolutely remarkable, and he sure showed it there. Yeah, that's uh, that's two for two for that particular play, and he really it's the same play. He runs a different route, and it was when they scored that got called back earlier uh, in the third quarter. 122 to go here. Three at the top, one at the bottom. As going, finds Luke. And Luke will fall forward all the way down to the 33 yard line as that clock continues to trickle down to one minute. Following this game, Mitch and I will provide our thoughts for this football game and talk about what the Generals need to do to put themselves in a position to win. Next Friday night is they're going to take on an excellent Jefferson Democrat football team. Is going. Pressure steps up. Looking downfield. Heaves one up. And this one is incomplete. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, Brian, you got to go get the football there. Sorry to cut you off, but yeah, I, I just had to get that out. He's got to really go get the football. He's he he was trying to catch it flat footed. Um, you know, I, and it's just I, he's he's a tall individual. I'm not gonna knock his height by any means, but you got to go up there and, and be the first guy to, to touch the football. That's how you're going to make most catches, and, and especially a catch like that where the ball's in the air for so long. So Logan looking downfield, looking for Luke, and that one is incomplete. As that'll bring up a third down and four with 37 seconds remaining in this football game as the Generals will fall to 3-2 and two on the year. And now they have to hop on the yellow bus and make their way to Jefferson. While the Bruins of Barlow will go to 4-1 and one in conference. And boy, that's one football team you're going to have to uh, keep your eye on, especially out there in the Mount Hood Conference. I anticipate the showdown with Central Catholic would most likely be for the trophy to be held in the trophy case. That game will be on October 25th, so that's one to circle on the calendar. But unfortunately, this football game has been hamstringed by penalties as the Generals have not done themselves any favors as we had another penalty there. As Logan is forced out of the pocket, right hand side throws the ball way downfield. Got a man, and he oh, was man. there, but incomplete. What an effort! As Just he, Logan with an absolute cannon, by the way, he threw that thing about 55 yards in the air. So Hand Canyon going, looking for his main man, Quinn Gerald, the six-one senior. But he was unable to haul that one in. But, Mitch, you're absolutely right. What a spectacular throw. Boy, he showed his arm strength there. Boy. Two in a row, really. Even just that pass that he missed uh, going down to the end zone there it was about a uh, it was a scramble and a 35-yard heave. So it, right, in the, right in the money there, right in the W of the Barlow. And, uh, unfortunately, that pass and this pass, unsuccessful. 28 seconds to go. Going. Forced out. Got to get rid of it. Got to get rid of it. He's just going to throw this one away on fourth down. I don't think that's going to get to the line of scrimmage, though. And that will be an intentional grounding penalty. And so that will do it for the Generals on fourth down. Is just the, a, a great way to end the game, though, huh? Well, certainly not, <laughs> certainly not the way that you had anticipated and wanted to draw it up here, but certainly credit the Bruins for their penalty flag. Couldn't have, couldn't have put a bow on it any better than that. Uh, penalty flags were pretty much the uh, the name of the evening here. So the Bruins will retain possession as the students of Barlow will make their way to the brand new resurfaced track to greet they're victorious. Barlow Bruins. What started out as a with a safety, a touchdown. And the Generals were able to score, but right before the half, the Bruins took full advantage of it and scored with three seconds left. As the Bruins will take a knee and Jaron. Will come over to greet his team, and both coaches will come out to the center of the field as Terry Summerfield will move his Barlow Bruins to four and one, and the Grant Generals will fall to three and two on the year as a final score of 28 to 13 out here in beautiful Gresham, Oregon, and that's what will conclude this contest as the Generals have. Got to clean up a lot of things here. Got to, got to get refocused as they venture their week. They will venture next week, pardon, to Jefferson. We will take a timeout, but when we come back, Mitch and I will provide our postgame thoughts 
As your final score, the Generals fall to the Bruins, 28-13. to Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Friends of Grant Football is a nonprofit organization that exists to build on Grant's strong football tradition, providing long-term viability and to provide the resources required to support the Grant Football community, past, present, and future. Friends of Grant Football would like to thank our 2019 Grant Football corporate and individual supporters and sponsors in the theme of our mission. Friends of Grant Football strives to enrich the lives of players, students, alumni, and administration by providing a program that sustains generation after generation in the pursuit of academic and athletic excellence. Our values are aligned with a tradition that extends beyond many generations of alumni who have passed through the hallways, representing PIL leadership in a challenging and supportive athletic environment. The foundation of the Generals was built on integrity, accountability, inclusion, and a proud competitive spirit. Please visit friendsofgrantfootball.com to join our efforts and participate within our grant football community. Brian here for Grant Boosters, who help raise money for Grant's High School's many diverse clubs and athletic teams. Grant's clubs and teams keep our kids inspired, active, and connected. The success of Grant's clubs and teams would not be possible without the support of parents, friends, and family like you. Please donate today to continue these wonderful activities. Please go to Grant Gives. And welcome back to Sam Barlow High School as the Barlow faithful make their way out to center field to greet the victorious Bruins of Barlow as they get the victory tonight 28 to 13 and you know Mitch it's you know we jokingly talked about the the, the penalty flags uh, not say jokingly it's, it was a matter of fact unfortunately but I felt like a lot of good things happened for the generals we saw a lot of Peter Zahari tonight something we haven't seen a lot of I know that he's been tasked with having to stay in and block a lot of the time but you know I think there's some things you can take away from here but you got to clean it up because you're going to play a really good Jefferson football team next week yeah you're going right there uh, across town you're going to face an excellent uh, football team there next week and you know some just some real good positive stuff to take out of this evening uh, you know Logan came out today and I, I believe in my opinion this was his strongest game of the season a lot of a lot of balls right on the money uh, a lot of timing routes that he was able to make you know in um, with the moisture in the air the drops are going to happen they're going to happen on both sides so that's nothing to really worry about um, it, it's just more of uh, some you know real positive stuff to take out of tonight there I, feel, I, I really do feel like Logan grew as a football player and more importantly as a quarterback here uh, today with uh, his approaches and and his his really his accuracy throughout the entire football game as those guys were running a lot of time routes a lot of out routes and that requires a, a very precise passer and uh, and a very tight spiral of the football so it doesn't wobble around and and, and stay in the air any longer than it needs to for uh, a defensive men to come in and, and take that out of the air and create a turnover there so logan with an excellent game as you mentioned there peter zahari with probably a, a, a game of the season perhaps a career game here this evening absolutely and uh in, unfortunately he had one of those scores wiped off but probably should have had two so as the generals make their way back to the locker room they will regroup and head coach john beck will certainly have his team refocus because they got themselves a, a big one next week they venture back into league play and gene have we got all our sponsors in or we need to take another break just to make sure you know what we'll take another break and we come back mitch we'll wrap this one up and we'll get on out of here again final score 28 to 13 don't go anywhere we'll be back in one minute I think I've always known he was going to do something like this. He did not want to do active duty because he wants to do college first. I think that was the biggest thing for him, instead of waiting and then doing college after. One of the differences I noticed when he came back from basic training, he was more organized in how he was going about things a little bit. I know he commented that a lot of things his classmates would do, that he didn't bother him before, but now he realizes, you know, because he's been outside of high school, I think maybe he's a little more responsible. He's thinking about his future a lot more. He talks about it and uh, the different possibilities. 
and he mentioned the ROTC program as well and he said, you know, I could graduate as an officer and so I was kind of excited when he mentioned that he could do that as well. I would just tell people, you know, if their son or daughter was considering the National Guard that I think it's a great opportunity. I think it's something that can really help somebody grow uh, and at the same time you're serving your country which is which is a great thing too. So I, I think it's a good opportunity.